tell Brian to go fix the gun. Okay, <clears throat> let's get this show on the road. And there we go. I don't think people necessarily understand what happened last week with the Great Ameri uh, Make, yeah, Make America, America Great Again hat. What are you trying to do with the message you're sending? Well, it was really just my subconscious. It was a feeling I had, you know, like people were taught how to think. We're taught how to feel. We don't know how to think for ourselves. We don't know how to feel for ourselves. People say feel free, but they don't really want us to feel free. And uh, I felt a freedom. And first of all, just doing something that everybody tells you not to do. I just love Trump. That's my boy. <laughs> like, uh, you know, it's like so many rappers. You look at a video of Snoop Dogg loving Trump, but then he get in the office and now they don't love him. Like, Trump is one of rap's favorite people, no, right? But, but we, we, we talk <laughs> so what do you believe? And we're going to be starting the broadcast out tonight. Now, Kanye West, or Ye, as he likes to be called, and I believe he officially uh, actually rechanged his name to Ye Y Ye, but why is what he's saying an actual truth? Whereas hip hop artists loved President Trump before he became president. And I'm just playing this. This is an older clip we're going to be discussing. But our main topic tonight is obviously going to be the Trump subpoena. And Kanye, or Betty, yeah, not Kanye West, and Candace Owens reportedly eulogizing. I say it again. Candace Owens eulogizing Black Lives Matter. We're going to play her speech in, the, in its entirety, and we're going to break that down. But in regards to Ye, suggesting that Blacks loved Trump before he became president, why is that? Talk about yes. that before he was yeah. elected president, people yeah. in hip-hop, it was, it was an in thing to put Donald Trump yeah. in your rhyme somewhere. Yeah. And by the way, right. I am in hip-hop, but I'm not just in hip-hop. I'm a black person, a black community, but I'm not just that. I feel like one thing is people try to minimize me to artists, hip hop, uh, black community. Yeah, I'm always gonna represent that, but I also represent the world. When you hear about slavery for 400 years, for 400 years, that sounds like a choice. Now we have to tackle that. This is an older, a little bit more vintage uh, Kanye. This is not, obviously this did not just happen. But I wanted to play it to just hear the hear, let you hear the fact that Kanye West is a wild card. And I'm talking to my beloved MAGA folks. Because understand, if he can do this here, he can do it against whatever else you may find adorable to you, for lack of a better term. But slavery, 400 years, sounds like a choice. What does he mean when he suggests slavery... Until it for 400 years sounds more like a choice. Four years? That sounds like a choice. <laughs> like, you was there for 400 years and it's all of y'all? You know, like, it's like we're, we're mentally in prison. I like the word prison because slavery goes too, too direct to the uh, idea of blacks. It's like slavery, Holocaust, Holocaust Jews, uh, slavery is blacks. So prison is something that unites us as one race, blacks and whites being one race. Uh, that we're one, we're, we're the human race. Do you feel that I'm feeling, do, do you feel that I'm being free and I'm thinking free? I, I, actually, I actually don't think you're thinking anything. I think what you're doing right now is actually the absence of thought. And the reason why I feel like that is because, because Kanye, you're entitled to your opinion. You're entitled to believe whatever you want. But there is fact and real world, real life consequence behind everything that you just said. And while you are making music and being an artist. Real quick, in the comments, uh, that would be Bulldog Will. You want to say something to your, your humble correspondent, yours truly, you can either come in the box or write it in the comments. I will respond to that. I always tell it, make it clear to my guests. My preferred audience is MAGA. I don't ban, block, or censor your comments. The fact that I'm a liberal does not mean a damn thing when it comes to your opinions. For you folks who have opinions, whether you agree or disagree with your host, means nothing. Come in the box, I'll give you plenty of time. Anyway, I just wanted to play that about Kanye. Slavery is a choice. In other words, there were plenty of slaves over the period of 400 years, as he pointed out. Why didn't you guys escape? 
First question I have to ask is, is he not familiar with the power of education? Perhaps has he never heard of gunpowder in the invention of the firearm? Just want to run that by you because that was Kanye. Okay, looking in the comments, I think he's referring to the fact, if you feel you're a slave, it's in your own mind. That sounds more like something that Prince the artist Prince trying to leave the, re the record label Warner Brothers might say. But when you look at the African-American slave trade or the African slave trade or whatever you want to call it, it had nothing to do with what was in your mind. People were actually being killed if they woke up one day and no longer felt like slavery was part of their mindset. If they walked off the plantation, they could be killed. So slavery was not a mindset. It was an actual reality. It was a legal reality. Even if you escape from the plantation, any white person in the country could return you back for a reward or take your life for escaping. So it was not a mindset. It was an actual reality. Uh, look at in the comments. And he says he's talking about slavery today. No, he said 400 years. He's not talking about slavery today. He mentioned, the, he, he just stated 400 years. That has nothing to do with today. We're the human race. Do you feel that I'm so, feeling Holocaust Jews, uh, slavery is blacks to the uh, idea of blacks. It's like slavery, Holocaust, Holocaust Jews, uh, slavery is blacks. Fine. You know, like, it's like we're we're mentally in prison. I like the word prison because slavery goes di too too direct to the uh, idea of blacks. It's like slavery, Holocaust, Holocaust Jews, uh, slavery is blacks. So prison is something that unites us as one okay, race. I don't want to play. I don't want to go through the whole uh, recording sifting for what he had to say. But yeah, he mentioned four hundred years. So he's not talking about anything modern related. He said four hundred years. It was plenty of you guys, this sounded like a choice. So he's clearly describing what happened in our past. He's not talking about anything in relation to today. Because he's saying it sounded like a choice, you could have done something about it. In today's society, if someone suggests they're a slave, yeah, you can go get an education, you can move to a different city or town, you can leave your job, you can literally leave whatever is enslaving you to some degree or another. And the 400 years that he mentioned, none of that was the case. All right, looking in the comments, uh, he is talking garbage, says Michael Gordon. You're not the only one that believes that. Kanye needs to know what he is talking about sometimes, and it sounds like he is in his own way. David Trey, 100% agree with you. Okay, going straight to the box, Bull Will. Welcome to the What's How do you feel about Kanye? What he's saying here? I think I think Kanye looking for anything that'll keep him relevant at any and all cost. You sure this isn't making him irrelevant? Nah, nah, nah. You what's what's the greatest thing to keep you uh, uh, in people' ear? Controversy. So how do you stay relevant? Controversy. Yeah, I, I suppose you're, you're right, but I mean Obama is still very relevant, and he's not controversial. Nah, not like that. You know, like I said. Any publicity is good publicity. So anything yeah. that he can to make himself stand out, that's what he does. And the more people uh, gra uh, uh, pay attention to it and make it uh, 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 a norm, the more he's going to do. So yeah, but I don't. Here, here's what I will. Here's how I will respond to that. Because Trump is also controversial, and both Trump and Kanye were very, very successful long before they became controversial. Both. Both individuals, Kanye and Trump, were loved by a far more, a far larger group of people than they are now. So I would submit to you, I agree that uh, any publicity is good publicity. But I will say this, both Kanye and Trump's audience has shrunk since they decided to take on being controversial. Yeah, of course, because people are tired of the shenanigans. Be real. You can, only, yeah. you, can only, you can only carry shenanigans, but so far. What do you have to right. say that's really relevant? You know, you can hide behind some mannequins all you want. You ever heard that old saying, like, talent, true talent shows? So, yeah. But they didn't have talent. Both Kanye and Trump were incredibly successful long before they became, they have talent. Trump was doing very well in real estate and business, and Kanye still is putting out really good music. 
he, they don't have to do this is the point I'm trying to make. Candace Owens, who we're going to talk about, she's a perfect example of someone who literally has to be controversial. Without the controversy, she would be far less wealthy, far less successful, far less known. Trump and Kanye didn't need to do that. No, but still, yeah, like I said, when you don't have nothing to say, what else can you say? So you're going to find different avenues to stay relevant, like newspapers. And newspaper always, you can, you can have 10 people that graduate from school and you can have 10 people that murder people out in the streets. They will always talk about the 10 people that murder people in the streets. Because yeah, yeah, I murder. agree with that. I agree with that. But he, he, had a, he has a shoe label that is rivaling Jordan damn near. His shoe label is incredibly successful. His music label is incredibly successful. He's produced the likes of John Legend and Chance the Rapper. Like, I, don't, I just don't see how going from that avenue where he was as Kanye West to... You know, following MAGA, you know, endorsing Candace Owens. I don't see how any, you know, now he's lost his contracts with Adidas and the Gap. To me, it seems like what he's doing is the publicity he's getting. To me, it seems like it's bad publicity compared to the publicity he used to get. You ever heard this old saying, I, I have it all, but still I'm missing something? Yeah, I've said that okay. in my, my my previous marriage. I said and that. <laughs> And see, that's what it is. Think about it. He has the he has a oh. lot. Yeah, there's still something missing. Yeah. Well, if he's a man who really enjoys a, a large fan base and like and love the adoration, he's going to soon start complaining that that's missing because he's losing fans right and left. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to uh, I want to come on here, man. I want to commend you for something that I saw happened the other day, and you handled it professionally when you went to somebody live and the dude on the okay. live didn't uh, agree with what your comments, even though you didn't make any comments and he cursed at you and you said, um, yeah. well, yeah, that was in the Candace Owens documentary. If I'm correct, yeah. the guy was saying, if, if you haven't seen the documentary, get the fuck out the live or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But you handled yeah. it professionally. That's one take to keep yeah. up. the. That was very well, I appreciate that. I appreciate you noticing that and uh in, in commenting on it. Definitely. Uh I, I get that. You know, anytime I go to um Republican right leaning lives because I present points from a liberal standpoint, even though I consider myself to be incredibly moderate, when you go to these lives, and this is the main reason why I try to come out here and deliver the content that I'm delivering. And by the way, folks. Tap your screen, get your boy up to 5,000 likes. We should have at least about three times as many people. This is only my third live on this particular, uh, what do you call it, uh, profile. But we had three, 400 at lunch. So tap your screens, get your boy to 5,000, bring me some more MAGA. But I try to deliver, just to answer your question, Bulldog, or to respond to your statement, I try to deliver a live where we do not have an echo chamber, a live where both liberals and conservatives can get on here and say whatever the hell they want to say without fear of censorship being blocked, banned, or deleted out of the, pro the profile. That doesn't exist in most lives. You go to most lives, everybody is liberal or everybody is conservative. And if right. anyone comes in there and does not toe that line, they are not welcome in there. And I try to make it clear that everyone is welcome here. So I do appreciate you seeing that. But that yeah. that's fairly common when I branch out. Yeah. Well, you have a good day, man. That's what I want to hit you up. Okay? Absolutely Take a pleasure. Come back anytime. You know how we do it. Appreciate you coming I, I, through. All right. Yeah. Okay, folks. Going back to the comments. Did you hear the latest where Biden caught blackmail in Saudi Arabia to produce lower gas prices? Yes. Yes, I heard that on the World News this evening uh, with uh, David Muir. I did hear that. The Saudis are trying to recoup, the OPEC nations are trying to recoup money that was lost during the pandemic when people were not purchasing fuel. So as opposed to continuing the drill baby drill ideology, they would rather stop drilling, make the demand for fuel shoot the hell up, the prices for fuel going along with it and literally gouge essentially all of the fuel using earthlings out of money. Now, the fact that we heard this directly from our government and the Saudis makes it clear that to some degree, the gas prices that are rising now 
are not all of President Biden's fault. The OPEC nations are admitting they are deliberately choosing not to drill when they can. Now, clearly, Trump had us more along the line of energy independence. Biden decided to halt that, whether you're talking about the pipeline, whether you're talking about fracking, whatever the case may be. That's Biden's fault. That's on Biden. However, OPEC was able to supply us with enough fuel, as you see, to make fuel prices manageable. And they decided just to simply stop doing that. Now, in regards to you suggesting that Biden is blackmailing them, he's not doing anything that, say, President Trump or probably Obama would, would have done. They're doing something that is deliberately harmful to America, the West, and a hell of a, a, hell of a lot of other nations strictly to make a profit, period. They're doing it strictly to increase their profits. So if we are selling them arms, which is what Biden is threatening to do, is to stop selling weapons to the Saudis, Trump would do it too. Wasn't Trump doing the same thing with the, 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 in, the trade imbalance with Mexico threatening to impose, you know, increased tariffs and things like that? The same stuff we were cheering that Trump did, and I was also cheering Trump. And I was in favor of those policies. He was threatening to impose higher taxes on China because the trade imbalance is so ridiculous. Well, yeah, what Biden is doing is along those lines, and at least from your humble correspondence point of view, I welcome it. I welcome it. If they're going to raise prices just to gouge, punish them any way you can. All right, looking in the comments. One thing to do for country is different than for personal reasons. Blue Don, well, what the OPEC nations are talking about doing, yeah, it does look like they're doing it strictly for personal gain, period. Just to make money by literally artificially increasing the demand for fuel. It's not like they don't have, they don't have enough to drill. They're just going to deliberately drill less. Kind of like when the new PlayStation comes out, Sony just deliberately makes a small amount of units so that the demand for the new consoles shoot the, shoot the hell up and people were paying $1,500 for a system. And then all of a sudden later on, they got plenty of them and they come down to five, 600 bucks. It's just artificially increasing the prices and people are hurting. The inflation rates, I mean, it's obviously putting the entire Biden administration under the bus. So Trump would do the same thing. He's not doing anything that Trump wouldn't do and we would not cheer Trump on for doing it. Okay. So I want to play a video for you guys. I asked if you could tap the screen, try to get your boy up to 5,000 likes, share the live, whatever you can do. This is only my third live on this profile and the numbers until I get, um, until I get everything going, the numbers are going to be a little bit lower. Like I said, I did, a, I did my second one though, uh, lunchtime this lunchtime today. And we had, I think about two to 300 folks in here throughout the entire live. And it's an hour and a half live or whatever. So I understand the time frame. It is prime time. I got the bears and commanders on in the background because I got money on the game. But I want to go straight to a video. And I want you guys to hear this. I'm a MAGA supporter and I totally support you. Amps, one, two, zero. Wow, I am honored by that. I, I really appreciate that because I do come from a liberal standpoint. I consider myself to be a moderate. I do see plenty of uh, beneficial legislation from the Trump administration. I'm not going to pretend like the economy wasn't good under Trump. So I don't bash either side unnecessarily. So I do appreciate that comment. Um, looking into my treasure chest here, I want you to hear this. Other witnesses have also gone to enormous lengths to avoid testifying about their dealings with Donald Trump. Steve Bannon has been tried and convicted by a jury of his peers for contempt of Congress. He is scheduled to be sentenced for this crime later this month. Criminal proceedings regarding Peter Navarro continue. Real quick in the comments, Steve Bannon scheduled to be sentenced later this month for his crimes. I, I, what, what is his crime? Contempt of court. Um, he's the one that, did he, did he take stop to steal money or a brick? You could name a brick in the in the wall, and he collected money, and there was never any bricks because the wall wasn't finished. But the question I'm asking is, how much time do you believe Steve Bannon is going to get? 
I mean, if he's if he's scheduled to be sentenced, now that's not suggesting that maybe a Republican, the friendlier Republican environment may help him out later. I don't know, but how much time do you think Steve Bannon is going to get? Any chance that he might snitch? I don't think so, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Continue. And Mark Meadows, Donald Trump's former chief of staff, has refused to testify based upon executive privilege. <laughs> yeah, one, two, zero. 30 days, huh? <laughs> that ain't shit. I could do 30, and I've never done a day in prison in my life. I've never even been arrested. 30 days ain't shit in the federal prison from what I hear. And he would definitely walk out of there a hero because MAGA would look at him like fucking Martha Stewart or somebody. You did your 30. You didn't talk. Come on back to 30 days. So now that ain't long enough, Blue Don. That's not long enough at all. 5,000 likes. I see a few patriots in here. I'm sure we got some liberals in here. It's not a lot of us, but tap the screen. See if you can get your boy up somewhere near that. I understand it's a very small crowd here, but if you would, tap the screen. I don't know Bam Bam is saying you can't share my live. I don't know why I was doing that. But I'll go back to Liz, who is enjoying her last few months in office after getting destroyed in the Wyoming primary. The committee's litigation with him continues. Mr. Chairman, at some point, the Department of Justice may well unearth the facts that these and other witnesses are currently concealing. But our duty today is to our country and our children and our Constitution. We are obligated to seek answers directly from the man who set this all in motion. And every American is entitled to those answers so we can act now to protect our republic. So what are we playing? This is the read off right before what, they're, what, what she is about to do is suggest that Trump be subpoenaed to come in. You hear her saying, we need to hear from the man. You'll hear the calls and then we'll go straight back to the box. We'll go straight back to the, the call. And if, in regards to Tulsi, uh, Amps, you asked if we hear about Tulsi. I, my program last evening was about Tulsi Gabbard. I, if I can find a speech, she gave a speech, I believe, on it was on Tucker Carlson. I played the Tucker Carlson speech where she gave a reason why, gave the reasons, excuse me, the reasons why Tulsi Gabbard decided to leave the Democratic Party. And we broke down her statement, sentence for sentence. Now, when you listen to Tulsi Gabbard, if you've been paying attention to Tulsi Gabbard over, say, the last year and a half, it should shock no one that she left the Democratic Party. How many times in the last 18 months has Tulsi Gabbard appeared on Fox News versus CNN or MSNBC? That alone should tell you where her mindset was. But then she started giving speeches about defending the Constitution, uh, being ordained by God. and some, I mean, she just sounded real Republican-like, which there is absolutely nothing wrong with being a Republican. I welcome Republicans on the program all the time. But her entire speech as to why she left the Democratic Party, if you saw it on paper and you didn't know who stated it, you would suggest it came from a conservative. She sounded 100% like a conservative. In my opinion, she was the in the wrong party to begin with. She was literally a liberal that identifies as conservative. She had the wrong pronoun from the beginning. So this afternoon, I am offering this resolution that the committee direct the chairman to issue a subpoena for relevant documents and testimony under oath from Donald John Trump. You think he's going to answer that? She wants Trump subpoenaed. You think he's going to answer that shit? Uh, Epps, in regards to suggesting we could say the same thing about Liz Cheney being a Republican in the wrong party, that's absolutely not true. When you look at the legislation that Cheney supports. You know, she supports an abortion ban without even provisions for rape or incest. There's nothing liberal about Liz Cheney. If you want to suggest 
a flaw of Liz Cheney that maybe you don't like, if you guys, for my MAGA folks, this is for my MAGA folks, not necessarily Republicans or conservatives. I'm talking MAGA. And I got to go back and get my other Make America Great hat. This Keep America Great was a failed campaign, 2020. This one obviously didn't succeed. But anyway, Liz Cheney, if you look at all of the legislation Liz Cheney has voted on and which way she voted since she's been a congressperson, there's no way in hell you could say she was a liberal in the making. She was as conservative as there could be. She voted in support of Trump well over 90% of the time. The only flaw with Liz Cheney is she wasn't loyal to Trump. If you take Liz Cheney, which the right considers to be about as much of a rhino as one can possibly be, if you take Liz Cheney and you look at how Republicans judged her on January 5th, she would have been a friend of the party. Everyone in the Republican Party would have been cheering Liz, Liz Cheney on. January 5th, literally all of the dislike, all of the vitriol towards Liz Cheney is from January 6th, 2021 on. So there's no way I'm going to buy into the fact that she's a rhino. Same thing with her dad, Dick Cheney, former vice president. The Republican Party didn't have a problem with him at all until his daughter ran afoul of Trump. Okay, my, okay, there we go. In connection with the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. General Lady yields back. If there's no further debate, the question is on agreeing to the resolution. Those in favor will say aye. 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 Those opposed is no. In the opinion of the chair that... Unanimously, not one person opposed. So unanimously, they want Trump to show up and talk, testify, speak, whatever you want to call it, under oath. You think that's going to happen? Two words. Hell no. But we'll see what can happen. We'll see how it follows. Remember, Steve Bannon wasn't showing up either. That's why he got held in contempt and things like that. So we'll see. But my opinion of President Trump is very similar to my opinion of Hunter Biden. Both of these individuals are going to try to delay, delay, delay in hopes of a more friendlier atmosphere. Hunter Biden will get his guaranteed because his dad is president. So Hunter Biden is not going to do a day in jail because his dad is president. He can either pardon him on the way out or pardon him if he, re if he gets reelected, pardon him once he wins a second term because he has nothing else to worry about. Or if he runs for a second term and loses, he can pardon them between November and January of 2024. So Hunter Biden has a pardon coming no matter what, if the courts can even convict him of anything. Hunter Biden would not do a day based on that. I'm not defending that shit for any reason at all. So do not put me in the camp of you're a liberal. So you're, No, Hunter Biden sounds crooked as hell. I'm just telling you how politics runs. Hunter Biden is not going to do a day for the reasons I just stated. President Trump, on the other hand, who I also don't believe would do a day in jail. However, his hopes is that a friendlier Republican atmosphere will begin next month and potentially strengthen in 2024. If he, obviously, if he becomes president, the shit goes away. But if DeSantis or Cruz or someone else were to win the office, it would likely go away as well. And that's what he's hoping to do is delay it as far as possible in hopes of a friendlier atmosphere. All right, looking in the comments, the Supreme Court dealt Trump a huge blow today. Rich, that is true. The odd thing is, you know, despite one guy being responsible for literally 33% of our Supreme Court justices, it's, it would be difficult. I would probably challenge any liberal at this point that suggested that the Supreme Court is in the camp for Trump. They are not. They are not. And I think it's even surprising President Trump because he is clearly a man that operates under, you should be loyal to me. He demands loyalty. If you, I, I can guarantee you this, and I'll even ask, ask you guys in the comments. If Trump could go back in time, you think he would appoint those same three Supreme Court justices? You think he would still support Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, and uh, I can't even think of the other, guy, the other guy's name. You think you think he was you think he would still appoint them? 
if he could go back in time with all of the rulings they've placed against him on the election, now on the um, on the special master and all that shit, you think he still? Now I see in the comments, Amp, you think he still would do it, huh? Amps. You think Trump would still appoint those same Supreme Court justices? You think he would still appoint Mike Pence as vice president? Because that's the only thing Mike Pence did wrong. It's not rude in favor of him on the election. But you're going to tell me the Supreme Court, he would still pick him. We can, we can agree to disagree. And by the way, uh, Amps, I appreciate your participation. Much love to you, my brother. But I will tell you, I don't believe for a moment that if Trump had a chance to decide if those st same justices came back, I don't think he'd pick them again. Trump is not very friendly to people who don't help him out in this time of need. I don't think he'd pick them again. Uh, looking in the comments, no way on Pence, exactly. Probably not Kavanaugh and, and uh, Gorsh. Yeah, Gorsh is the other one. Okay, first president. Now, I want you to hear something, by the way, because all of you guys are suggesting that Trump will not Show when up you for show, your Trump will not show up for the subpoenas. So obviously, <laughs> with that type of suggestion, I gotta go back and play some vintage Trump. When you have your staff taking the Fifth Amendment, taking the Fifth, so they're not prosecuted. When you have the man that set up the illegal server taking the Fifth, I think it's disgraceful. Fifth Amendment, Bob. The mob takes the fifth. If you're innocent, why are you taking the Fifth Amendment? Fifth Amendment. Horrible. Horrible. He pleaded the fifth and that was the end. We never heard about him again. This is like... So what do you think? How, how do you think that comment has aged now that Trump is on the other side? You know, Hillary Clinton pleading the fifth and all of her shit. That means she got something to hide. As he stated, the mob pleads the fifth. Does he feel that same way about Steve Bannon and some of these other folks? Um, drop mail, 83, they definitely stole the election. You know, I did a show, I did several shows on 2000 Mules, watched it over a half a dozen times. I don't think they, if you, if you want to suggest the election, and I'll go right to the box, Big Nasty, I do see you in there. But if you want to suggest that the election was taken from President Trump, we can talk about that. However, the amount of evidence that the Trump administration presented does not uh, lead one to make that conclusion in full. A lot of the reason folks are suggesting the election was not held, not ruled properly is crowd size. No way in the world Biden got the most votes in history. Uh, things of that nature, which are all co which are all essentially um, coincidental. That's not evidence. That is not evidence. And other things like the Dominion voting machines, which now they're suing and hopefully folks like uh, Sidney Powell, Rudolph Giuliani don't end up like Mr. Jones from yesterday, whose full name I can't say because that's why I'm banned from other my other platform. All right, going to the box, Big Nasty. I want to ask you, Big Nasty. Welcome to the I've talked before. Big Nasty. Hey, man. How you yes. doing? Good evening, sir. Welcome. Good to have you back. So what do you think? You think uh, Trump, now that they are going to subpoena, now that they have officially subpoenaed him, think he's going to answer that? No, he's not. He's going to do exactly <laughs> what uh, Steve Bannon and the others. The, the, the problem, the question is, is the committee bold enough to uh, forward a contempt charge to the Justice Department? That's what. So if, if Trump decides he's not going to appear, then they have to vote on a contempt of Congress. And then if that vote is positive, then then they still have to recommend uh, contempt yeah. charges to the Justice Department. And then will the justice. Right. But I have yeah, uh, sure, right. on, the, on the Supreme Court thing that you had asked, uh, would Trump, would he elect those same justices again? Right, right. People got to understand, if you go back and you look at every confirmation hearing on every um, person that Trump had put up, you'll see a guy sitting right behind every one of them, the same guy. And he comes from the Heritage Foundation, which is one of those right wing. Um, they basically are the, um, the the thinking group that recommends all of the 
uh, Supreme Court justice for the Republican Party. So when they okay. have an opportunity, the Heritage Foundation who's come in and says, here's who we want nominated. So, you know, Trump, Bush, Reagan, going all the way back, I think I think they've been I think they've been doing it for the last 40, 50 years. So right. they're the ones that recommend this is who we this is the conservative justice we want uh, nominated. So Trump really had nothing to do with any one of them. And he was just parroting what they want. So, yeah. So you believe when it comes to Trump's appointments of Supreme Court justices, he essentially acted as a puppet for this group? Yeah, and, that, um, and that's it, that is normal. That's been going on for a long time, and the Democrats have a group too. I don't know the name of it, uh, but the liberals have a group that also presents the justice nomination. I think it's wrong. I think I think that the party. I, it really surprises me from Trump. Trump, if if it's one thing I would say about Trump is I'd have a hard time seeing him as a puppet for anybody. I, yeah, I would never see that. That that's news to me. But I'll let you continue. Trump, I, that's news to me though. Dude, Trump doesn't care. All he wants to do is get paid. He doesn't, I mean, he'll do whatever the party <laughs> wants okay. him to do just as long as he's getting paid. He's been doing that all his well, life. You, wait, wait, wait a minute. When you say getting paid, what happened to he didn't take a salary and he no. was here to actually really do what was best for America? Now you tell okay. me he's there to get paid. Did I hear something wrong? You know, now we talked about this before. Number one, <laughs> By law, he had to take a salary. He can't not take a salary. He has to by law. Number two, they only have documentation of 100 k that he gave to Wounded Warrior. They don't have any documentation of any other charitable gift. The third thing is the GSA said that the Trump organizations that they had sent where Trump had, you know, where they had stayed every time he went to events, everybody had to stay at Trump properties. Raked okay. him in over seven hundred million dollars in the four years that he was president. So, and that includes the hotel in downtown D.C. that the Trump Hotel that's in D.C. that everything government went. To. But he promised when he no. got in office, he would focus on running the country and not run his business, similar to Arnold Schwarzenegger promising he would not be involved in Hollywood movies and things like that while he was governor. Trump oh, promised okay. that he wouldn't do that. You're telling Trump's me he made seven hundred million while being president? Now you can be like this to the MAGA crowd because they'll go, "Yeah, no, I'm not <laughs> that dumb." So anyhow, so the other thing too is with his with, with his latest um, uh, failures at the Supreme Court, that was done by Justice Thomas. Now people got to understand that it never went to the Supreme Court; it just went to will the Supreme Court take it up? And they assign, uh, when that happens, they rotate through the justices and whoever's going to look over the case and determine whether the case is going to be taken by the court. And he denied it. Now, they got to understand, right now, Justice Thomas is under some big scrutiny because of the crap his wife did. So yeah. he's, he's kind of, uh, I think that that would have been some seriously bad optics if he would have said, yeah, let's yeah. let's go ahead and take this case when the Supreme well, he Court already, he, well, because of his wife, you're right, because I believe he was the only one that dissented in regards yeah. to some of the January 6th stuff coming out. So he already right. got some real bad optics. You're right about yeah. that. He was the only he's one at the point that. of potentially destroying his legacy at this point. Yeah. So I, I think because of the optics, I think he was like, and I'm pretty sure he probably talked to the other justices too, because even yeah. though he's the one that's looking at the case to take it up, I'm pretty sure that they sit down in the background and say, hey, I got this case that came in. What do you guys think? And they all probably said, you need to let that go. <laughs> well, so, Jeff, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Even though I tend to agree with you, Jeff Lohner in the comments is saying, you've been watching too much CNN. So. <laughs> I mean, that's not CNN. That's a fact. It was just yeah. the if you read his letter, he just kind of comes flat. That is the shortest denial letter I've ever seen yeah. from the Supreme Court. Yeah. It's only like two sentences. And it says, yeah, yeah we got it, and hell no. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so. <laughs> well, anyhow, I think when it came to the election, 
they didn't even respond. Am I correct when he when it came to trying to get the election overturned? The Supreme Court didn't even respond to his request. Yeah, that's correct. They, they it, yeah. it, it wasn't. Uh, I think they res- I think they sent a, something back saying it's not following the proper process, so we're not even going to look at it. Yeah. So. He hasn't done very. Has he had any success? Has he had any success at all with anything in regards to the Supreme Court? Yeah, he he's had a couple. Um, nothing to do with the election, but he's had a couple cases that went to the Supreme Court that that benefited him. I don't remember what they were, but I don't uh, either. They they weren't they weren't really big. Uh, I think okay. one of there was one recently where they. Um, uh, they were six to three on a case for him for something that he had going on. I can't remember. And he won it, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't, wasn't significant. Okay that everybody okay. was saying the just, the, the conservative justice are going to say yes. And the liberals are going to say no. So, right. Fair enough. So what do you, let me give you, a, let me give you one straight from the comments. Uh, excuse me. Drop mail 83 suggests that Trump had the country running smoothly. It was the Democrats promoting bullshit. How do you respond to that? Well, um, number one, the president doesn't run the country. The Congress does, basically. I mean, he's just a figurehead, except when it comes to some executive orders and stuff. So okay. there were some there were some situations that I didn't like. I didn't like the continuing of the Bush tax cuts, especially the tax cuts that they approved that gave the middle class a little cut that lasted only two years and then uh, started pulling it back, which gets pulled back for the next six years. But the corporate taxes cuts get to stay forever. Um, So, and there was, and he also brokered the, now one thing Trump did do is he brokered the um, OPEC plus deal, which cut back production and raised oil prices. That's the reason why the prices were so high when he left office, because he brokered the OPEC plus, which brought in Mexico and they agreed to cut down uh, production. So that hurt oil prices. Now in March of this year of 2022, that agreement went away and production started ramping up. And that's why we're seeing the prices coming down now because it takes time. Let me ask you this economically inflation wise, the economy wise, who do you give the nod to, Biden or Trump? Who do you think was doing a better job? Well, I, I think Trump was doing a good job until the pandemic hit. I think his yeah. hand of the pandemic was catastrophic. I mean, if he would have just come out and would have been strong with the pandemic, getting people vaccinated, getting people to protect themselves, I don't think we would have had. Now, we would have still had a little bit of inflation because we had the issues with um the shipping in China and all the factories in China that got shut down. We had all the issues with the shipping getting backed up from China because of the pandemic in China. But if we would have uh, maintained ours here, I don't think the pan- I don't think the uh, inflation would have been as bad. Um, but people, you know, it's funny that the that everybody who's talking about the pan uh, talking talking about the inflation wants to blame Biden or Trump. Yeah. It's a world, we're having a world economic. Well, but I mean, shutting down the pipeline, fracking, I mean, there's things you could do in this country to make us a little bit more. The the Keystone Pipeline, Keystone XL Pipeline had zero to do with gas prices. Fracking? Fracking? Oh, that fracking in, in Pennsylvania? No, Wherever you was... want to do it, you can drill in Oklahoma. I mean, Biden reduced the amount of in drilling we were doing in, in this country. Gulf. In the Gulf. Huh? And that was in the Gulf. And he shut down uh, oil platforms that were not production. They were not producing anything. So, so in, your opinion, in your opinion, Biden personally has not done anything to raise the price of fuel. Uh, I think he hasn't done enough to get <laughs> down. Now, there's a comment in here saying Keystone Pipeline was also 11,000 jobs. That's bullshit. The Keystone XL, not the East Keystone Pipeline, it's called the XL. It's an ex- it's a shortcut of the pipeline. Okay. And it was shut down by Trump's Supreme Court. Under Trump, 
because they could not show the amount of protection for environmental areas and um, national parks that it was going through. They could not show how they were going to protect from spills and stuff like that. So Trump's Supreme Court shut that down. It wasn't Biden. Now, Biden canceled the permit after he Okay. Came, but the All right. XL pipeline hasn't even been started in the U.S. Some of it in Canada has been, but it hasn't in the U.S. It hasn't even been built. So people saying that, oh, we lost all these jobs. There were a potential of 11,000 total jobs. That's from Canada to the Gulf of Mexico. And the problem is that those jobs are not uh, additional jobs. What it is is there's a guy working in the pipeline in Alberta. Then it moves into North Dakota. That guy who was working in Alberta stays in Alberta, and a new guy takes over in North Dakota. Now, that's two jobs, but it's the same job. It's not both two people working together. It's one job. Okay, moving. I see what you're saying. As the, pipeline. Yeah. the only yeah. jobs that were that the Keystone XL was going to stay permanent was about 100 maintenance jobs that are out of Cushing, Oklahoma. Here. You know, for me, it's difficult because... Both parties are going to kind of tell you what they want you to hear in, in regards to the pipeline and, and the, 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 what fuel prices are. It's, for me, it's hard to believe that fuel prices shot up the way they have in this country and the president had zero to do with it, though. Not, not, yeah, not but, to say he is totally responsible for it, but the idea that none of it is his fault, to me, if it happens on your watch, you're partially to blame for it. But prices didn't shoot up in the U.S. It shot up worldwide. I mean, okay. prices in Hong Kong was fifteen dollars a gallon. I mean, okay. I, get want, you, you, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, but I'm just simply saying America tends to. Yeah, I get what you're saying, but America tends to be doing better. Just because something happens globally doesn't always mean it affects us. So I don't know. It happened on his watch. So. I'm going to give him some of the partial responsibility for it. But I got to move it on. I'll give you the last word there, Big Nasty. I'll say that, you know, yes, you're right to a point that he, but it, but people need to understand that this stuff takes time. It takes time for when you right now, and you have gas at $5 a gallon where you're at, and then all of a sudden they increase production by $2 million a day, that's only equal to about 30 cents a gallon. But you're not going to see that 30 cents for like three months. It's not going to happen. And so when you have inflation. Here's why, here's why I don't like. Here's why I don't like folks absolving Biden of blame. When you look at what the fuel prices were in this country around March or April, they were much higher than they are now. When he right. went to Saudi Arabia, because in this, he was saying the same thing you're saying. You know, the president doesn't have anything to do with what's going on. A few prices are happening globally. Just like he was saying exactly what you were saying. But then he goes to Saudi Arabia, makes a deal with fuel prices go down, and both him and Kamala on television taking credit for fuel prices being lower. What happened to the president doesn't have anything to do with controlling fuel prices? Well, My I, point is this. You I can't say- take credit only when good stuff happens. That looks funky. Go I, ahead. And I- but I never said that the president can't do anything. Uh, like he I said, did. He did. His oh, administration well, is saying it. There's a very few things that he can do. Like if you can convince Saudi uh, OPEC to increase production, cool. If you can, like with Trump, if you can convince uh, OPEC plus to decrease production. Which Too much, is- Ben. I, I, get, I get what you're saying. I got to go, but... As far as the, the, the people are, are not going to go with all that. That's too much spin. Either you have nothing to do with it or you do. Don't The minute well, you start taking credit for prices going down, all of that stuff about, well, I don't control when they go up, it's on deaf ears. It's, it's too, I you gotta, you got you to gotta spin too much at that point. I do agree, and I'm, I'll close on this, though. People need to pay attention to what these economies have done with what party. During Reagan... They crushed the economy, and then Clinton got it back. Or I mean, during Bush one, and then Clinton recovered the economy. Bush two crushed the economy, and Obama recovered the economy. And then, if it wasn't for pandemic, if it wasn't for the pandemic, I think the Trump economy would have stayed pretty good because we had good jobs going. Everything was going pretty good. I I can't tell the future, so I don't know. But all I know mm-hmm. is that under Biden. 
the deficit has dropped over a trillion dollars since Biden's been office. It went up over two trillion dollars when it was in, when it was under Trump. So the deficit has gone down. You know, it's going to take time for if you know if if Congress cooperates, which is another thing, to get some of this stuff fixed. That's all I'm saying. All right, all right. Appreciate you Appreciate coming through. All right, man. Thank I'll you. talk to you later. All right, it's a pleasure, Big Nasty. Come on back through any time. Hey, go ahead and drop your sign out. I don't know what the hell's going on, man. Okay, comments. Taking our oil reserves to lower prices before the midterms. The reserves are for war. Jeff, we're talking about politicians. Politicians are going to do whatever they can to get a second term or maintain their position of power. So if he, if he has to do something like tap into the war reserves to allow him to get a second administration, he's going to do that. He's going to do that. And I, and I would submit to you that Trump would do the same thing and Obama would likely do it as well. These people, if it's one thing an administration wants, it's a second term. And, and they're, going, they're just going to do that. I'm not saying it's right, but I'm just simply saying that's what politicians do. All right, we're going to play something else. Another topic, as you see what I had on the screen, both Trump's subpoena, which we just covered, but this is Candace Owens. I want you to hear what she had to say. I want you to hear uh, something she discussed earlier and get your take on it. Now, I'm no Candace Owens fan, but this is interesting. Team around me last night, family around me. And I guess I just want to give you guys that behind the scenes listen to what I said when I entered the stage. Take a listen. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here. I am honored to be able to speak out and eulogize the Black Lives Matter movement, the life and the death of an organization that tore this country apart. What can we say about Black Lives Matter? Well, the first thing that I would say is that we all know that it has been a scam. It has been a scam that is essentially operated with a figurative gun to every single American's head. It is a scam that finds its basis in stupidity. People posting black squares is a, my favorite moment, I think, from the Black Lives Matter movement, demanding that every single person post a black square to prove that they weren't racist. This document... Demanding that every single person posts a black square to signalize they're not racist. I don't even know of anybody who posted a black square. I honestly, be, I know about the the signs on lawns and things like that. And my neighborhood is predominantly white. I would say less than ten, less than five percent of the homes in my area, even during the height of the George Floyd protests, had signs. So I don't know what she's suggesting. She makes it sound like they're forcing people to put dots and signs everywhere when that's just it's not true. Most Americans weren't even doing that. Documentary was one of the most important things for me to make. And there's a ton of people in this room that I need to thank for this moment and bringing this uh, to the public. But it was important for me to make because it is really the story of the media. It was Malcolm X that warned us of the media's power, how it can make friends your enemies and enemies your friends, how it can tell you to hate someone overnight. And we essentially get in line. The media truly is the most powerful entity on earth, and there was no greater example of that in my lifetime than the George Floyd story. We decided to name it the greatest lie ever sold because what the media is in the business of is selling lies, selling lies to people and their households and getting people to hate one another. I want to interrupt real quick, and we're going to be breaking this speech down, and I see folks in the comments, Bible uh, guy who said, we and Candace, and Candace is a very smart woman, a good, a smart talking head. However, some of the statements she's making, I just have questions. For instance, right now she's talking about the media, media being divisive and things like that. Being candid, your humble correspondent, I am 50. I'm a child of the 70s and 80s. I don't remember folks talking about how damaging or destructive the media was when I was a child. However, uh, in the black community, we knew the media was deliberately portraying us as awful citizens, whether we were criminals, whether we lived horrendously impoverished lives, 
They would put blacks on television who could barely speak English. And no one, there was not a big, huge push about how disingenuous the media is. That didn't happen until it got into the political sphere. Maybe during the Bush administration, Sarah Palin, the lamestream media and all of that. But I would submit to you that us African Americans were the original victims of the media. Nobody gave a shit about it. But we were the ones they would put on TV, the ones who could barely talk, who looked like buckwheat and all of that, to portray us in a negative light. So anybody talking about the media, we knew about that long before it became an issue. This story was personal to me because when I went out into the public sphere and I interjected just a little bit of truth, which you guys are going to see, I was castigated not only by the media, but by my own black peers. I was told that I wasn't allowed to say the truth about who and what George Floyd was because the victim narrative felt too good and people had- Okay, now that's a problem. She says she was told she could not say the truth about what George Floyd was because the victim narrative was too powerful. Any of you who follow Candace Owens should know that the moment his death became big news in the media, Candace Owens dropped a video bringing up his entire criminal history, up, up to and including some of the violent crimes that George Floyd committed back in the early 2000s. Now, he served his time for that. He went to prison for, I believe he went into a woman's house and held her at gunpoint or something like that. If the guy's a piece of shit, that's fine. But he served his time for that. The reason why she was chastised for bringing this stuff up it's simple. It had nothing to do with why he was killed. The guy was passing a fake $20 bill, I guess, because they didn't even follow through on that. And he resisted arrest, and the guy, the cop overdid his, his job and killed him. Her bringing up his entire criminal history had nothing to do with the event at hand. And it looked like her goal was to dirty up George Floyd. That's why folks criticized her. Wasn't that she couldn't tell the truth? She went and dug up shit that had nothing to do with what was going on. People had become so comfortable in being the victim. Real quick in the comments, before continuing, outlaw bulls. You said it actually does. George Floyd back, bursting into a home of a woman and holding her at gunpoint or robbing her or whatever he did back in 2004. What in serving prison time for it, by the way, he did his time. What does that have to do with what Derek Chauvin did to him? Because you're saying it actually does. You're saying it has something to do with why he lost his life. What does that have to do with that? I'm, I'm curious. Uh, a crime he committed well over a decade earlier. What does that have to do with what Derek Chauvin did to him? Because they brought him out after passing a, um, supposedly passing a fake $20 bill, and they had not even run his background check yet. They were still fighting with the guy. So at the time, they didn't even know what his criminal history was. How to, tell me, tell me where this comes along the line that what he did 10, 15 years ago has something to do with that. Because I saw your comment. Um, Hang on a second, Rainy. I do want to finish this up because there's she has more to say, but I wanted to see that. Looking in the comments, Ashley Babbitt should have complied too. Joby, great comment. Uh, God destroyed the mural. Uh, God destroyed the mural of him with a bolt of lightning. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what. Okay, you didn't want him to have a mural. I never thought that George Floyd should have gotten a should have got a statue. I agree with that, but neither should Stonewall Jackson. Or General Lee. I'm fine with that. Uh, George Floyd had a bad heart. He could have, he could have from, what do you, he could have OD'd before. I don't, okay, you said he could have OD'd or something. As far as I'm concerned, if you sit on Betty White's neck for nine minutes, I don't want to hear that she was 99 years of age. You're going to be charged with her death. I don't care how bad his heart was. You can't sit on somebody for nine minutes and then say, well, he died of something else. He was apparently, according to the police in their defense, he was struggling so much 
They had to be restrained for nine minutes. But then you want to tell me that same guy with all that energy, this big dude that it took three guys to hold down, suddenly had a bad heart and just died right there on the spot. Huh? He went from really strong to really dead, all while you were sitting on him. And we supposed to believe that the city on him had nothing to do with why he died. Okay. Victim and being treated like the victim. I believe honestly that what we are seeing in America is an entire group of people that are being trained to race to the bottom. People are fighting to be oppressed. People want to be able to jump on board and accuse one another of oppressing constantly. What I was talking to about with my friend Ye is that we are uh, very quickly arriving in a trauma economy where people want to constantly pretend to be traumatized by various instances and what it's ultimately doing is it's weakening all of us. It's weakening. Okay, she said we're arriving in a traumatized economy where people want to be traumatized by everything. Arriving? Have you seen, for any of you folks who are in my age bracket, the war on drugs, this is your, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs and Biden, I don't want my children growing up in a racial jungle. We've always had people promoting trauma and fear upon the public. That is the whole reason behind the war on drugs and all the tough laws and the Rudolph Giuliani stopping Fritz. What the hell is she talking about? Why is she trying to make this sound like this is something new? We've always been promoting fear in this country. The caravans coming over from uh, the, the southern border during the Trump administration, telling us that there were Middle Eastern terrorists in that group. We've always done this. She makes it sound like it's something new. In all of our relationships with one another. And I think the greatest thing is that it's weakening our relationship with God. We exist together as one nation under God, right? I guess I will respond with she must don't know about separation of church and state, huh? <laughs> It's important to say under God, not beside God, not on top of God, not above God. Real quick in the comments, MDJP Guy, a difficult name to pronounce, stating your ignorance is appalling. Suppose he's talking about your humble correspondent. I welcome criticism. Civil discourse on this channel is the way we run it. Uh, sir, if you want, come in the box. I will give you priority. I make a promise to you, solemn promise. I don't ban, I don't block, I don't censor. The fact that you disagree with your host means nothing. I will let you get your point across. I generally give my callers 10 minutes. Tell me what I'm ignorant on. I'm here. All I need is you. God, but under God. And what this culture has become largely has been an atheist culture. And I can talk to you about how they did it to black America. And it's important to understand the story of black America, because if black America was the experiment in understanding how you could sell trauma to a group of people, then right now they are running that experiment on all human beings across the globe, focusing on black America first and seeing what happens to a group of individuals that buys the victim narrative, that believes that they can be nothing else but oppressed. They never get ahead in their lives. They never are at the top of companies. And they are consistently told that it's because of racism and not because they have no belief in themselves. I want to obviously allow you guys to watch documentaries, so I don't want to say too much other than to first and foremost thank God. Um, I had the most liberal route to conservatism, and I grew up in an incredibly religious household, and I resented that when I became a teenager and throughout my college years. I resented that, and I became a more secular individual convinced <laughs> real, that. Real quick atheist. in the comments once again. Uh, this was an interesting comment from Leslie. She's a racist against her own people. You know, I don't want to go so far as to refer to the woman as intolerant, but I will tell you this. If you did not see the face of Candace Owens and you literally just had all of her statements on paper in a book and you read them, you would probably think that she was white, period. Because her language in regards to African-Americans, it is really negative. She portrays African Americans as, you know, victim blaming, uh, idolizing criminals. She doesn't say any really good things about African Americans, do she? 
I mean, if you really look at the African American community, we could talk about inner city crime in Chicago and gang violence and drug use and all of that. However, since the Civil Rights Act, the amount of African Americans graduating with high school diplomas and college diplomas has steadily increased every year. The amount of wealth in the black community continues to go up. You're starting to have double digit black billionaires now. None of that comes out of the mouth of Candace Owens. You wouldn't see her trying to host a valedictorian speech at an HBCU. It's just all negative. Not to say that what she's saying is always a lie. It just seems like it's hand-picked for negativity. Is there nothing positive about the black community that she could bring up? Is, do you, is that the only thing you can report is negativity? And I'm speaking to my MAGA folks who like Candace Owens. Are you going to tell me she can't find anything positive about the black community? Hell, even Trump says more positive shit about black people than Candace Owens. Atheism was the path, the path for me. But I now realize that and by destroying that pillar of faith in American society, every other ill has followed. When we talk about why it is that we have so many black Americans that can't read and so many black Americans that can't get ahead, it's because after they destroyed the God pillar, they went after families. It is why the topic of broken families is not a joke. It is not a joke. People will tell you the incarceration rates that face black men, but they won't communicate to you how many of those black men grew up without a father in a home. The denigration of men that we are seeing in society with movements like Me Too, with movements like Time's Up, fraudulent movements that are actually around just to disempower manhood and to make manhood obsolete. Let me tell you, there is no country and there is no household within a country that can survive without strong men. We need men. Okay, she's correct about the two-parent household, but what she did is skipped over really quickly the reason that both sides of the aisle have cited. And it is the mass incarceration rate of the war on drugs. How many fathers were taken away from the home because of the heavy penalties the war on drugs delivered? She skipped right over that and started attacking feminists. It, like I said, both sides of the aisle admit that that shit was horrible on black males. She gave it no credence at all, virtually none at all. So while she's speaking facts, she's skewing things to lead down one path when other routes exist. This will be over in a, this is, this is, now this speech happened today. So this is a, so somebody in the audience asked why you're still talking about George Floyd and all of that. This happened today. That's why we're discussing this speech. She had a documentary, documentary that just came out criticizing Black Lives Matter and really essentially suggesting that George Floyd did not die at the hands of the Minneapolis police and trying to somehow exonerate Derek Chauvin, who's serving time for his murder. All of this came out today, and this is in regards to her documentary. But the radicalized feminist movement is teaching us the exact opposite. It is teaching us that women can do it all by themselves, and that to aspire to family and to aspire to children and to aspire to being a CEO as women are in their households is something that should be looked down upon. It is because they destroyed family and it's because black America has a 74% single motherhood rate that we are seeing these individuals turn to culture naturally because the government knows that if there's not a mom and a dad sitting around the dinner table, then those kids are going to pursue maternity and paternity elsewhere. That elsewhere tends to be the streets. I agree with that. That elsewhere tends to be when they put on their headphones and they listen to hip hop music and suddenly they are emulating the- Real quick, almost over, uh, L Red, you asked, will I watch the documentary? Absolutely, however, I'm trying to find a way to watch it without having to subscribe to some type of service. It's on Daily Wire, and I believe it's on Bitlily. And in both cases, they want you to offer, if you listen, if it was like renting a movie from Redbox or Netflix or something, and I paid a one-time five or ten buck fee, I would be fine doing that. Like with 2,000 Mules. But I don't want to subscribe for six months 
to some online magazine and I'm not interested in, in following so I can watch this documentary. So I do want to see it so I can communicate better with the audience that has watched it. So I will watch it just like I watched Mike Lindell's Cyber Symposium, 2000 Muse, Durham Report, etc. However, I do not want to subscribe to some entity, and that's what's happening right now. So we'll see what happens. And I do agree, uh, it's Mark, she wants money. Okay, that's fine. So did Dinesh D'Souza. But then again, so does Michael Moore. You know, he's a liberal um, film producer. I mean, I understand they're trying to make a living, but just put the documentary out there where I can purchase it for five or six bucks. I'm willing to do that. Don't make me sign to a freaking magazine for a monthly subscription where I'm going to be charged for the next 12 months. I'm not trying to do all that. And the people that they see on their screens and on TV shows aspiring to that yeah. lifestyle and not aspiring to something better. The last pillar beyond faith and beyond family that we have to talk about is the education system, which is talk systematically to later, teaching Appreciate children to Patriot be dumb and talk. to be emotional so that they can use narratives like the Black Lives Matter narratives to inspire them uh, to go outside and to act like fools. And that obviously is a pillar. Okay, I'm going to stop it here because there's more I want to talk to you guys about. But the reason I played her, her entire speech, and there's only another minute or so of it, is exactly one minute, one second. But the, the comment I was going to make at the end of it, and I'm stopping it because it's getting kind of boring at this point, but I stopped it because she spent several minutes criticizing Black Lives Matter without one time mentioning why the organization, why the movement was created in the first place. If you want to suggest that Black Lives Matter, the organization has been fraud, fraudulent and collecting money and, and misappropriating, which is true, by the way. You can bring that up. But the idea of not even mentioning why Black Lives Matter came to existence in the first place is appalling. And she did not mention that. Not once in that entire speech did she mention any claims that African Americans are suggesting about police. It never even came up. She brought up George Floyd, tried to paint George Floyd as a bad guy, said nothing about police at all. Without the police conduct, there would be no Black Lives Matter. Didn't mention it at all. So I don't know what the purpose of Candace Owens is other than to rile up the black community. I get folks in my lives all the time, my beloved MAGA folks, suggesting that she's here to wake up the black community. Candace Owens will wake up the black community like Liz Cheney on the January 6th hearings will wake up MAGA. Fact is, the people that we're claiming that they're going to wake up are not watching what they're doing. If Candace Owens is here to wake up the black community, 90% of the black community is not even watching Candace Owens. You mention her name and they vomit. She doesn't have the power to wake up the black community. She doesn't have the credibility to wake up the black community. No different than when I try to come on my lives and make a point about something Liz Cheney stated in the January 6th hearings. MAGA is not even watching that shit. So Liz Cheney is never going to wake up MAGA to what took place on January 6th because she doesn't have any credibility with MAGA. That's what Candace Owens is to the black community. She has zero credibility. So anybody sitting around suggesting that Candace Owens is waking up the black community obviously has very little ties to the black community. They don't watch her. They don't like her. They don't follow her. They don't listen to her. And last but not least, they do not trust her. Look at her audience. Look at any Candace Owens video. Look at the comment section. You think those people are in the hood? You think they're roaming around Harlem? Chicago? You think any of those commentators are in those places? No. They're in small town, heartland cities in America where they're not even dealing with the stuff she's talking about. You think anybody on the Candace Owens page actually made contributions to Black Lives Matter to begin with? You think Candace Owens, before, before we found out Black Lives Matter was crooked, you think Candace Owens was donating money to that organization? You think she was following anything they were talking about? Everybody that Black Lives Matter has stepped up to defend 
Candace Owens has stepped up to criticize. So as far as Candace Owens is concerned, there was never a need for Black Lives Matter to begin with because everybody they're defending was crooked. I don't know what else can I tell you. She's not waking anybody up. She is doing what we refer to as preaching to the choir. The folks that follow Candace Owens would believe what Candace Owens is saying even if Candace Owens never talked to them. They already believe that. Nothing wrong with you having your opinion on either side of the aisle. I don't have any problem with that. But she's not waking anyone up. They already had that mindset. Look it in the comments. She's a genius. Candace for president. <laughs> genius how? How, do, how is she a genius? What has she done to make, I mean, did she invent a light bulb or something I don't know about? She invented a new aircraft? She created the Space Force? <laughs> what is Candace Owens did to make her a genius? I don't know where that's coming from. Now, if you want to say Trump, Trump trained fuck Biden, a friend of the program, says that Candace is a goddess. Well, she's not ugly. She might, she may be attractive of sorts. If you want to say she's a goddess, okay, I can work with that. Uh, diamond and silk tickets are too expensive. So I watched them on YouTube. Arizona Horsley, diamond and silk. You know, is for, for all the criticism I'm giving um, Candace Owens, diamond and silk is a sideshow. That's some shit you go to Ringling Brothers or see on the side back in the 1920s. They might as well be uh, folks in blackface or something like that. Because if Candace Owens... Weaves, speaking, stereotype, stereotypical ghetto slang. If they were not promoting Trump, they would fit all the stereotypes of folks who question the activities of black people. They literally sound like what you hear fighting in liquor stores and things like that in the hood. They just happen to be saying things that are favorable to Trump. But <laughs> Candace, I mean, not Candace Owens, um, Diamond and Silk is a sideshow. I would watch them for humor. In fact, I think they're funnier than the Hodge twins. And the Hodge twins purport to be comedians. Diamond and Silk is a sideshow. And I'm sure that when they, because they've met Trump, they've been to rallies. I'm sure people in the audience talk all kinds of shit about Diamond and Silk. <laughs> if they moved in next to a lot of folks, they would be like, who the hell are these hillbillies coming in? Anyway, let me go back to the box. <laughs> Diamond and Silk, that's funny. Uh, Trump train. Fuck Biden, friend of the program. Rainy Kane, sorry about it, I didn't see it. Herschel Walker is also a sideshow. I do agree with that as well, but he is um, he is a Republican. And they want the Senate, so I can understand why they're supporting him. But yeah, Herschel Walker is kind of like a Kanye West. He's a wild card. You don't know what he may do. You may He may help you get the Senate in Georgia, but may do things when he is in that position to destroy your party in the process. Herschel Walker is a bad candidate. And the only reason he's there is because of Trump, because there was a better candidate, Republican, running for that position. Herschel Walker is a bad candidate. Uh, looking in the comments here, appreciate you guys that are rolling with me. Like I said, this is a smaller crowd because this is only my third broadcast on this profile. Appreciate you guys who are tapping the screen. Perhaps you can get your humble correspondent to 10,000 likes. Bring me more MAGA. You know what I like to talk to, but liberals are welcome on the program as well. I always give my same spiel. I don't ban, block, or censor when you are in the box. Disagreeing with the host means absolutely nothing. You'll get a chance to state your point. I won't limit you, censor you, or block you regardless of what you have to say. All right, Biden and Harris haven't done shit for black people. Well, you know something, Freddie, Jeff, that was said about Obama as well. And I'll tell you this. I say this about Obama in particular. If Obama got in office and started doing things to help Chicago because he was also criticized for not doing anything for his um, crime-ridden city. If, Bi if Obama got in office and he started, first black president, he started helping out Chicago or started helping out black people, what would, be, what would his critics say? We didn't elect a president of black people. We didn't vote for the president of Chicago. You're supposed to be the president of the United States. If he's helping out blacks, he's a racist. He's picking out a specific race. So that's what would have happened if he did help out blacks. 
But when he tried to work with the entire country, well, you didn't do shit for black people. So he couldn't win. Now, in regards to Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, same story applies. If Biden gets in there, remember, Biden stated ahead of time he's going to pick a first, he's going to, be, he's going to pick a black woman as a VP and a black woman as the Supreme Court Justice. I'm bringing this up because you're suggesting he done nothing for black people. When he did those positions for black people, what did they say? That's racist. That is racist. You stated ahead of time you were going to put a black person as a SCOTUS or a black person as VP. That's racist. But now you're suggesting, well, he hasn't done anything for black people. I would submit to you that if he had, you'd probably be calling him a racist. All right, going back to the comments. The Trump era is over. Let's move past it. DeSantis 2024. User 551, as a liberal who tends to follow politics, your statement frightens me. Not, that, not because it's bad, not because it's wrong, but probably because it is a winning effort. If DeSantis were to run for president with the adoration or at least the endorsement of Trump, because MAGA is a large portion of the right wing right now, so you need Trump on board as well. But if you get Trump at the top of the ticket, if you get Trump at the top of the ticket, you're going to have a hard time with the Liz Cheney's, the Mitt Romney's, the Bush families, the Reagan families, the McCain families. Those folks have a large following still, and they're going to be fighting against Trump. If you get dissenters at the top of the ticket, the entire Republican Party comes together like a Lego set. Ron DeSantis did not have anywhere near the detractors as Trump. There are plenty of never Trumpers. I have never heard of a never DeSantis. There are not a lot of those out there in the right wing. So if DeSantis were to run, he would unify the hell out of the Republican Party. He would get just about all of MAGA, even the MAGA that have left because they're upset with Trump for some reason or another. He would pull the Republican Party completely together. And I don't think Biden could deal with that right now, with his poll numbers, with his economy, with the way even liberals view Biden. I think that would be a winning strategy. Fortunately for us liberals, MAGA don't want that. MAGA wants Trump back. We beat him once. We can beat him again. As Arnold Schwarzenegger once said, if it bleeds, we can kill it. All right, look at it in the comments. Never Republican, says David. Uh, what is that? Says David Dino Blasted. Never Republican. Okay, and that's you have that right. I have never voted Republican either, by the way, being candid. Uh, he's a criminal as well, says New York Giants 457. In regards to Ron DeSantis being a criminal, I don't know anything about the guy's personal life or what crimes he may have committed, but I'll tell you this, he don't have even remotely a fraction of the accusations that's been made against Trump. Even if Trump is not a criminal, for my MAGA folks, he has survived more accusations than Ron DeSantis could ever dream of. I mean, what, 20-some women accused him of sexual assault? I mean, he got NDAs floating all over the damn place. Trump is literally like a walking scandal. Ron DeSantis would have to work hard to measure up anywhere near Trump's levels of scandals. And by the way, even when Trump was not a politician and well-liked even among blacks, he still was not scandal-free. It just wasn't making the news as much. Uh, looking at the comments here. DeSantis is image wiser, cleaner than Trump. Yeah, a lot cleaner, a lot cleaner. And I would contend to you as a politician, a lot wiser, far more wiser. Take away the tweets and the fighting from Trump and he easily gets a second term. Put DeSantis in there, you're not going to get that kind of shit. DeSantis is not going to be tweeting out at three in the morning, getting in fights with Rosie O'Donnell and all of these. DeSantis ain't going to do that. He might say a little something here and there, but DeSantis is a polished politician. He's not going to do that shit. He wouldn't make the same mistakes as Trump. And he'd probably get two terms. He'd probably get two terms. Uh, now, I see in the comments, uh, D.O. Cor says DeSantis just barely won. A win is a win. And I believe his image has probably gotten stronger since he did win. Uh, if Trump is the best ever president, why is he the most hated president and why did he divide the USA? 
Nicodemus. Yeah, I don't know why anyone would suggest that Trump is the GOAT. I get folks on my program all the time, my beloved MAGA folks, Trump is the GOAT. Based on what? I mean, he gave us a good economy, but shit, I mean, he didn't free slaves. He didn't pass the Civil Rights Act. He didn't send somebody to the moon. He didn't beat Nazis. He didn't give women the right to vote. What did he do to put him in the category as best ever? I mean, I just gave you shit that has lifelong implications. What has Trump done 50, 100 years from now? People will be still bragging that that was awesome. Space Force, maybe? I don't know. Maybe that'll help help us break apart an asteroid that's going to des destroy Earth. Maybe we'll have some type of, uh, what was that, Starship Troopers type war? And we can say, well, Trump created the Space Force? I don't know. But right now, the GOAT? How? Based on what? <laughs> no way in the hell Trump would qualify as the GOAT. That just doesn't make any sense. And I'm not taking away that he was a successful president to some degree. If you want to, in energy independence, Army Army, uh, Army uh, vet Bruce, as far as Trump's energy independence, 100 years from now, we're, we're going to certainly be away from fossil fuels. Trump bringing us to energy independence on fossil fuels will be meaningless 100 years from now. Nobody's going to be using that shit. And for a short period of time, we'll be able to say fuel prices went up. And Trump came in office and brought him down. But that'll be meaningless. I don't, you got to give me something other than that. You know, if I had to give Trump credit for something that would have lasted 100 years or more that he did, and he actually should deserve credit for this, but he, by way of his own actions, fucked it up, is he brought us the vaccine. Trump is responsible for Operation Warp Speed, which the CDA, or CDC, rather, Center for Disease Control, FDA, Food and Drug Administration, WHO, World Health Organization, all claim the vaccine saved millions of lives. That came because of Trump. But because he released it in such a fucked up manner, he can't take credit for it. That right there, saving millions of lives, is by far Trump's biggest accomplishment. But his own supporters will boo him if he brings it up. So there you go. Oh, if you want to talk about something that he did that will be remembered for years and years and years. And um, Jacqueline Hunter says, prove it. Prove that the vaccine saved me. I don't need to prove it. The, 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 the medical community is stating it. That's all you need to do, whether it's true or not. The medical community is stating it. Now, the medical community used to also tell you smoking cigarettes was good for your health. I get what you're saying. But unless they change their tune 50 years from now, 100 years from now, they're going to be suggesting that Trump's vaccine has saved a lot of lives. And it's not just happening here in America. Moderna, Pfizer, and even Johnson & Johnson to some degree are reportedly given, being given credit for saving lives in other countries. All of that's because of Trump and Operation Warp Speed. Nothing else you're bringing up, the economy and none of that other shit, energy independence, none of that stuff compares to saving millions of lives, but he can't take credit for it. All right, going back to the box. Alaska guy, 19. Talk before, nevertheless, welcome to the program. Alaska guy, good evening. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. What do you think? Have you been listening to the program for a minute? I'm, I'm talking about Candace Owens we were mentioning earlier. Did you hear any of that? Um, uh, no, actually, I I just really okay. just got on, but I, okay. I, I well, right now, what do you think about, I, I got you there, I see you there, what do you think about the notion that Trump is the greatest of all time? I get folks who suggest that Trump is the GOAT, greatest of all time. What do you think about that? Okay, okay, let me be clear right off the bat, okay, okay, first of all, Trump and the way he talks, okay, you hearing me? Okay, I'm listening. He's an asshole. <laughs> He's an okay. asshole. Okay, that's fair. I'll tell, that, okay. Oh, I'll tell that to his face. You're an asshole. You're a prick. You need to tone your crap down, okay? If you're going to be okay. the president, you need to be nice. 
Be respectful. You don't need to be, wait a minute. I don't think you need to be nice. I just think you doing things that are deliberately disrespectful well, I mean, or untruthful. I mean, just lying okay, about okay. them. Okay, I mean, go ahead. I mean, listen, listen to the way Obama talks, right? Okay. He's a smooth cat. He is. Fair, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, he sounds good, dude. Okay. Listening to him was, yeah. Ear you candy compared that. to Trump. Yes, I agree. Okay, okay, okay. But Donald Trump going to get on there, you know, because he's a businessman. That's what he is, right? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Elon Musk is a businessman. He don't talk like that. Um, I mean, I know lots of no, very no, no, prominent, no, 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 successful no, no. businessmen that don't. Bill Gates don't get up there but, and curse but, everybody but, out. But he wasn't. He wasn't put in a spot of being president either. Okay. Okay. So you don't think he was acting like that until he became president? No, no, no. He was always like that. Are you okay, kidding? Okay, so that ain't got nothing to do with him being a businessman. Then that's his natural asshole attitude. Yep. Okay. Sure enough. All right. Now, now we're getting somewhere. All right. Okay. I guess what I'm saying is, is I believe, you know, and I lean right. I mean, I'm not going to okay. lie. I All lean right. right. I do. Fair enough. Nothing wrong with that. You know, I mean, but I'm open for interpretation to anything in politics at this point. Yeah, and okay. we all should be. We all should be. Yes. Fair I mean, enough. Cause, okay, cause I can work with a, that. This is a this politics right now is madness. It, it is all jacked up. Okay. okay. On both sides. Okay. All right. My gig is okay. Is I did uh, in both terms. I voted for Trump. And I'll tell All you right. why. I'll tell you why. Okay. okay. First of all, because he's an asshole. Okay. That's why I voted for him. When you say okay, you're starting to make me think of Joe Pesci. <laughs> he fuck you in the drive through. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you wild man. Check you out. Check you out. Okay. No, man. I'm an old man. I've guess, been around for guess, a while. No, no, man. I mean, seriously. You know, I mean, okay, he's a jerk off. Okay, I know. All right. Okay. And that, and that's cool. Nobody has to like him. I I don't even actually like him. Okay. But but personally, and I tell him that personally. I tell him, you know, you need to shut the fuck up, bro. Okay. You need to stop being a jerk off. All right. Um but at the same time, he's the one that everybody's afraid of. Okay. How so? What do you mean by afraid of? Who's afraid of Trump? Um, uh, the international folks, like Putin and everybody else. What makes you think that um, Kim Jong Un was still shooting missiles over Japan while Trump was in office, even after Trump had him in the White House? Kim Jong-un went right back to North Korea and continued doing that. So, and by the way, you said Putin, Trump sent 59 or 60 tomahawks in the Syria early in his administration. It did not make Putin leave Syria or anything like that. So, I don't get why you're suggesting that these people are afraid of him. Well, that's just one illustration, sir. I mean, now we're talking about, first of all, who, okay, has ever uh, actually met with uh, Fat Kim? Um, I'm not getting what you know, you're saying. I, I don't. You see, I'm not. I'm not getting what you're saying because, like I said, I just gave you both two of our nemesis, which is. Uh, Putin and uh, Kim Jong Un, and I would con I would submit to you that they both continue uh, engaging in behavior that we did not like while Trump was president. They didn't back down at all. Well, no, but they're not gonna they're not gonna 
uh, supersede their grounds. They're, they're not going to overstep their boundaries. No, they're not. So what's making you say that they were afraid of him? I, I, don't, I need some evidence. Give me something that leads you to believe people were afraid of Trump. No, it, it, okay. It's not about being afraid of Trump, okay? It's about having respect for what he might do, okay? Because he's a businessman, mind you, he's a businessman. Uh, business, business is based on what? I'm going to make a deal with somebody. I'm going to make a deal with you, right? Okay. 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 Well, all right. You're going to meet your end of the bargain, or else. All right. No, I think that would be fine. I think it's. I don't. Yeah. See, I don't. I'm not. I don't know if I. I think you're giving him accolades that I'm having a hard time agreeing with. I don't. I. I mean, I. I, I'm willing to give him credit for his economy and things like that. But all it is, people were afraid of him and stuff like that. I, I just don't see that. I see the folks no, who were no, being no, bad. No, the folks who were being bad no, players. No. They huh? weren't afraid. No, they weren't. What they did was they had respect. Okay. It's what it is. It's respect. Okay, what's making you think that Vladimir Putin or Kim Jong Un respected Trump? What did they do to make you think they respected him? Well, what would you do? I don't see. I mean, nothing. think about that now. Think about that now. Wait a minute. Think about that now. What would you do if you were American president and you had to go talk to them, our enemies? Okay. What would you do? You know, you can't just go in there and tell them to shut the F up and blah, blah, blah. Right. You can, you can treat them with respect. That's what you can start with. You can treat them with respect. Listen, I, I unfortunately, I do got to move the program. I got some other folks in here, but I'll give you the last word. But I got to say, I don't I don't see what you're saying. I appreciate you coming through, but I don't see it the way you're saying it. But you're always welcome Okay, back. okay, okay. Here, here's my prop for, 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 you know, a plus President Trump, okay? Um, a, he's a businessman. B, he's gonna, he's got a vested interest because, you know, everybody says he's making all this money, but he really ain't. But overall, yes, he is. Um, and C, okay, he's gonna make sure that all our enemies and our allies are going to respect and pay us our just dues. Okay, he's okay. going to make them do that. All right. Okay. okay. Overall, yeah. overall. Okay, I'm just saying. Overall, that's what he's done. All right. That's all. All right, all right Alaska. I okay. got to move it on. Come on back to anytime. Right. Right. You have a good night, sir. Absolutely. You too. Good talk. All right. Uh, all right looking in the. All right. Go ahead and drop out because it's on your side for some reason. I appreciate you coming through. All right. Look here. Trump is a super traitor. Wow. Oh, by the way, Biden's quid pro, quid pro quo is taking place again. DMAC, you're probably right with Saudi Arabia is looking that way. Let's try it again. Trump train. Friend of the program. Let's see if we can get him on this time. Trump train, welcome back. What's, What's up? What's happening, liberal? Not much at all. Good to hey. have you on here. Trump train, fuck Biden. I always love the name, man. I ain't gonna, What's on your mind this week? I ain't going to change it. I started it since TikTok started. Hey, um, why'd you have to change your handle? What happened? I talked about Jones. You know who? First name Alex. Yeah. Losing a um, $930 billion settlement yesterday. Yeah, and Parkland. His name alone is banned on this app, which is bullshit. But I wanted to talk about him and mentioning his name got me in trouble okay okay well yeah i know a lot about him he's uh he's brought a lot of things into, into fruition as well that people used to say a long time ago was crazy and bs has actually come true though but we won't go into all about that 
Give me, the, give me one of them. Without us, without us going too far and crossing the line, give me something he said that's come to fruition that we originally thought was ridiculous. I hadn't watched the documentary. I can't, man. I hate. I can't remember exactly what it is. But he, like, okay, the, he okay. said they, they were gonna do like the camps. They were gonna do like enlightenment camps, and they wanted to set up like the railroads and that, and all this stuff, the trains for people that were against certain parties and stuff, and. and uh you know what I'm saying? I, I know you. I see your face, but listen. Yeah, I don't you, know. I don't follow him. I'm not. I'm not saying they, what you're saying is ridiculous FEMA, or anything like that. FEMA I don't camp. follow Alex, so I don't know. Which is why the I asked you. But he had said he had said that they were going to make FEMA camps here, like like to okay. re-edu- re-educate certain people that didn't agree with the government, and and they have done re-educate them how? How are you going to re-educate mm-hmm. someone? Uh, round them up. Like when people say MAGA's crazy, all these MAGA's, these conspirators, or this and that, we can just take them all and put them on a train and take them to a camp and re-educate them. Has that happened? Has you no, seen any happened. evidence has, of that but, happening? But you can, but you can go and look on the FEMA website, and they do have camps all around this country that are designated to to what for whatever reason that are are built, and that there are trains that have guillotines on them and things like that. They have built them and they have done it. Okay, I. It's I safe. Yeah, you got it's you really are way above anyway, my pay grade get, with that. You let's went, get let's get off Mr. Sandy, Jones. What do you think? What do you think about the Sandy Hook children? You think he was wrong for that? I think that that um they could have they could have falsified certain numbers, but like you said, I don't want to get you in trouble, so let's not go there. Let's go about Candace, where you began with. Let's <laughs> let's talk about Candace. <laughs> Trump, Trump. I saw some of yeah. Candace's oh videos. My God, I didn't I didn't know. Okay, what did you say we want to talk about? <laughs> He threw me off with that. All right, All right, what did you say you want to talk about? I, listen, it, everybody gets it wrong. Candace ain't trying to appeal to white people. She was going to some of the hardest black colleges and black high schools, okay? There's videos. There's old videos out there that they were trying to scrub. And she was she would get booed, like, so bad when she first started talking. And then other people would stand up for her and say, give her a minute and let her finish her sentence. By the time her conversations were done, she was loved by the community there because she was spitting facts about what she was just playing some of. That that, that you do have to have two people in the family and, and a dual income and the fathers need to stay home and work hard. She wasn't trying to bash the black community. She's okay, trying to wait educate them. Here's the problem with that. Here's the problem. I'm fine with the dual parent household. And I said it while she was saying it. Everything she says is not a, it is not wrong. She does say some facts. But she goes too far, such as with George Floyd, suggesting that the the police didn't kill the guy and bringing up his record from 2004 that he served time and was released on. That is going too far. That does not help the black community out at all, what she's doing there, where she's trying to exonerate Derek Chauvin and penalize George Floyd in death. We don't need that. How do we benefit from that? I completely agree that that George Floyd should have never had died in, in that manner. Now, if he's a was he a piece of shit, sure. Anybody go look up his record and see he was no saint. I mean, they're, they're undoubtable. He's not for that already. His death, his record has nothing to do with why Derek Chauvin killed him. Why bring that up? That stuff's 15, 20 years old. Why is that coming up? Hey. That, I'm gonna answer your question with that. You said, "What are people gonna say about Trump 50 years from now? They still gonna be talking about him." <laughs> Listen, because he, rent, he rents space in people's minds. Why is Candace? But seriously, why is Candace Owens, when this guy dies, bringing up stuff he did 20 years ago? What is the purpose of doing it? I think because I think it aggravated her so much that people were actually, and it, I mean, aggravated me. They were glorifying a person because of his death. And, and, and this was not a person that w- that led some some uh, wonderful, beautiful life that should have be held be held to that standard. Did, did he? He certainly died for the wrong reasons. You, nobody, nobody should die like that. I don't want my child to die like that. Okay, I don't but want if you're aggravated, like okay, fair enough, Trump train. If you're aggravated that people are idolizing this guy, why don't you go after the people that are idolizing him? Why go after the deceased? He's dead. Why go after and try to make him look worse after death? I don't I'm still not understanding why anybody black would view that as a positive. I think I, oh man. I, I can't speak for what why Candace would say what she said or or or, or anything. 
in, in, about Candace. I just know with me, it was kind of it's kind of disgusting when you when you know that, like she had said, she said in one of her videos one time, how you think that his uh that that pregnant woman felt that he held a gun to her belly? You know, do you think she cared? I mean, do, do you think he cared for for any value of life when he's when dead. he did that in that moment? I'm about to call you kid, but he's dead. He is dead. Why are you bringing up? How a victim, a person he victimized 20 years ago or whatever, 2004, I believe that that case is from, bringing up somebody he victimized in 2004, served prison time for, and now has been killed by the police. Why bring up the, the, the mindset of that victim from all of those years ago, other than to say, let's not give a shit about George Floyd. Let's pay attention to his victims from 15 years ago. She was I'll literally trying to dirty up the deceased. Maybe we could get Candace on your show and she could explain it. That would be wonderful. Because <laughs> nobody else can. I would love to have Candace on here because nobody else Candace, can, can explain why she's dirtying she is, up somebody who's is deceased. very articulated. She's a very articulated, very educated woman. And you can hear it when she speaks. You can watch any of her videos. She's, she's very intelligent. Well, shit, Hitler was intelligent. I'm not saying she's not intelligent. I agree with that. You can use your powers for evil, though. Just because you're just because you're intelligent, don't mean you're always doing good with it. To me, I just, I just go ahead. I just didn't see it that way. Everybody was spitting that you know, oh, Candace is a sellout, this and that. I don't see it. I mean, call except I don't see color either. So all these people that talk all that crap, man, on your shows and stuff about color. Uh, I still believe in reverse racism because I'm sorry, dude. You can still be racist and not be white. People think you only can 100%. be racist if you're white. Farrakhan, Farrakhan's um, a perfect example. Farrak I agree with you 100%. There. Farrakhan's a perfect example of a non-white racist. He does not like white people. He uses all kinds of derogatory ways of describing them. So I agree with that. However, the reason why folks are suggesting that Candace Owens is a sellout is because she traffics in negativity in regards to the black community. Now, there is a lot of negativity negativity that you can point out among the black race. You can point out plenty of it in the white race. No matter what group of people you're talking about, you can find negative people in that group and tell accurate factual stories about specifically negativity and say, well, I'm not lying. I'm speaking facts. Yes, you are. But you're omitting all the positives. Where, where are the reports or the videos from Candace Owens about a school that graduated all A students or a high school that has turned around from drive-bys being committed in the parking lot to a whole bunch of tech graduates. She talks nothing positive about the black community, even though you and I both know there is a substantial amount of positivity you could find in the black community. Candace doesn't discuss any of that. She looks for negativity, and that's what she presents. That is why people call her a sellout. Because Candace Owens, I see it every day. Go ahead. I, I, I see it every day. My wife teaches, and uh, we go. Um, you know, obviously, there's there's struggling communities. Obviously, adversely, they, they are black communities. A lot of them. And when you go there, you see it. Like we was doing a function not too long ago, and and I noticed that predominantly it's the grandmas and the this and that that's bringing all the childrens to the to the function. And I'm like, where are the fathers? You know what I'm saying? Now, I did see some, but predominantly. It was the grandmothers and the women that's bringing these kids to the function. Yeah, I I agree. Like I told you in, in the beginning of our conversation, I agree with her point about a two parent household and a nuclear family. But what she did to George Floyd, I don't agree with. And that's what I'm saying. As long as she keeps doing stuff like that, the good stuff is not going to be heard. She's sensationalizing <laughs> negativity. A good, here's another good example. She brings up all of the fraud of Black Lives Matter without ever mentioning why Black Lives Matter came to exist in the first place. In fact... Black lives do matter. They do matter. It's certainly correct. Why, and I mean, Why did people start saying that? Why did people start saying that to begin with? I believe they say it because the same reason you know why they say it, because of the fact that people have, have gotten to where... They, they, a color is seen by certain groups of people that have hate in their hearts and and cops and uneducated people that pull their gun immediately when they see a black person and they're doing a pullover on a car or something and then these parents have to have their talk with their child and say you know this is sad it's a very is a very sad world we live in i've never and i agree with you 100 never heard that from candace owens at all not once 
all of the mention of Black Lives Matter from Candace Owens has been negative. Not one mentioned that, well, it was a, a, a legitimate organization or a legitimate cause in the beginning and the movement has corrupted. No, it was just all negative. Now, Candace Owens, on the other hand, is not going to say what you said because all of the folks you're talking about that have to have that child, black parents that have to have that talk with their kids or black victims of police brutality, Candace Owens is too busy dirtying those people up. As far as Candace Owens is concerned, those people that are being, uh, that are meeting a, an unsavory ending with police, they all deserved it. They're all bad guys. Most of the people that become controversial victims of police, Candace Owens defend the police. So you're never going to hear Candace Owens say exactly what you just said because she's well, too hope, busy deliberately going on the other side. Let's hope that she can figure out a way to come with a more positive approach to her narrative. Because, I mean, what she's doing is not wrong. Maybe it's just the way she's going about it. It's kind of like when people talk about Trump. Hell, yeah, Trump's smart. Hell, yeah, he's a businessman. Hell, yeah, he does. Your, your other caller, he was kind of like, ooh, it was eyes closed and stuff. But, listen, he's right about Trump. Trump tried to make people pay their fair share, just like he said that one time. You know, we what, about the racism? Go, what about the racism from Trump? I don't feel like Trump was a racist. Everybody loved Trump before he ran for president. Everybody was on to make videos. Yeah, I want you, know, you to... Feel. And I asked you that because I want to play something for you. I want you to hear this, and we'll talk about it. It's only a minute or two, but I want you to hear it. And folks in the audience, I invite you to listen to this. Are you aware? Of Hang on, let me, let me turn the volume up. My apologies here. That there's nice people on both sides of the aisle when he says there's no, no nice people no, on both I'm sides. Gonna, no, I'm not, oh. yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not going to play that. I want you to hear this. I think okay. so, but I think people know better than okay. that. Right. Probably the this media is, and the Democratic this Party. This is him sitting, obviously, if you can see on the monitor, him having an interview with Bill O'Reilly. And the reason I'm presenting this is I don't want to give you a CNN, MSNBC source or some crazy article. I'm giving you Trump right on screen, admitting to it. So you listen to this and you tell me what do you think on the other side. And folks in the audience, I invite you to comment or get in the box as well. In general, trying to paint you as a racist. Are you aware of that? I think so, but I think people know better than okay, that. I'm right. probably the least racist person on earth. Well, I've known you I a long time, and I, don't, I, I never saw any racism from you. However, when you tweet out a thing, and this bothered me, i got to tell you. You tweeted out that um, whites killed by blacks, these are statistics you picked up from somewhere, at a rate of 81%. And that's totally wrong. Um, whites killed by blacks is 15 percent. Yet you tweeted it was 81 percent. Now, Bill, I didn't tweet. I retweeted somebody that was supposedly yeah, an expert. But you don't and want was to be, also a radio. Why do you show. want to be in that well, zone? Look, hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. Am I going to check every statistic? I've got millions and millions of people. You got it. You're a presidential contender. You I got millions check. of people. You know what? Fine. But this came out of radio shows and everything else. Oh, come on, radio, radio shows. Was a retreat. I didn't say. Excuse me. All it was is a retweet. It wasn't from me, and it did. It come out came out of a radio show uh, and other be places because you see all the names. Look, you know I'm looking out for you, right? You know that? Yeah, you know, I'm looking out for you. I look out for every honest politician. I don't care what party they're in. Don't do this. Don't put your name on stuff like this because it makes the other side, it gives them stuff to tell the ill-informed voter that you're a racist. I mean, just get his hand well, on the platter. This was a retweet. Bill, I'm sure you're looking out for me. Yeah. Everybody is, right? Yeah. <laughs> this was a retweet. This was a retweet. <laughs> Whatever it is. And it I came told from you, you shouldn't tweet ever. Very credible. You shouldn't be tweeting. You? Don't tweet. Give it uh, up for Lent. Sure. Lent is coming soon. Okay. okay. What do you think of that? How, Trump train, I'm going to ask you because I know you certainly are true MAGA supporter. You're always welcome here. It's always a pleasure talking to you. How are African Americans supposed to view him tweeting out that we're responsible for 81% of the homicides of white people when the actual number is 15, not apologizing, wow. not even checking why, where he got the facts from, or giving us any reason why he tweeted out to begin with? How are we supposed to look at that? Let's answer some of your people that's on here. Um, one, he didn't apologize that I know about. He probably should have. He should have said, yeah, I'm sorry. He, but he's a narcissist. We know that. That doesn't mean that so he's not a, he was a great president. Not apologizing he, he should have apologized, but he also and stated his case in the fact that it was a retweet. Wait a minute. 
Let's let's break it up some. I don't want you to throw because I'll forget something. Let's take it one by one. I'll let you continue. But how are we supposed to view the fact that he tweeted that out and didn't apologize? All right, listen, yeah, he, I think that he should have apologized. I think he should have apologized. And, and because he, he did explain didn't, his case, because he, he did explain the case that was the re- not, But you're not answering the question. <laughs> you, I agree he should have apologized. You and I agree on that. He did, but he, he didn't. didn't make those so statistics. I'm asking you. Did. <laughs> huh? He didn't make those statistics. Um, you and I both know that if, if you go on any any search engine you want, I'm not going to say and name any, and you look up what he, we both know because we've both done it, and look up what he's done for the black community and and, and how many five-star female general and, and all these appointed people, and everybody said, oh, Biden did this. No, Biden did not. Trump did numerous things, made more, developed more money for You're HBCUs. Not, wait, wait, wait a minute, Trump train. You're, you're, we're talking about this the, video. People's questions. Let's, let's stay this here. Video. We can go to, hold on. We can go to HBCUs or anything you want after this, but let's stay you here. Fire, on this you video. see the fire in the background? You see the fire in the background of Trump? They were trying That's, to roast him. This was, this was Bill O'Reilly roasted him. You're, but you're not answering my question. How are African Americans supposed to view him not apologizing for something that makes us look like we're murdering white people wholesale? What, how do we supposed to view that? I don't know. I know the statistics are pretty rough with with with, with the numbers of of what we have for percentage of black and whites in in prisons and what we have for hate on hate crime and typically more blacks do have more crime against other blacks than whites I, i'm well, pretty certain of that. And that but that was that was also that was actually covered in what he tweeted out it did show that blacks have more crime it just wasn't to anywhere here's the actual here's the actual thing he tweeted out you see it on the screen there blacks killed by whites two percent so white people, two percent of black homicides are are done by white people. The other ninety eight percent are non white. Blacks killed by police, one percent. One percent of our homicides are by police, which is actually a lot. Whites killed by police, three percent, which is actually a hell of a lot. Whites, and I don't know if any of this shit is true because if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can't really see it because I got a red line going through it here. But it says the source is the Crime Statistics Bureau in San Francisco. And you heard Bill O'Reilly say that source does not even exist, which is why you heard Trump go, well, I don't have time to fact check everything I sent out, which is fucking ridiculous because he's known for saying fake news all the time. And here he is admitting, I don't even fact check the shit I send out. Everything about this looks bad, Trump. (laughs) First off, first off, everybody knows. Everybody Uh knows you you can't hold no gun like that. And accurately shoot for starters. If you know how to hold a gun, <laughs> okay. first off, <laughs> it, it, which is another good point you made. Who normally holds guns like that? What What does that make you think of when you see an individual holding a gun that way? It little make you, make little you think of little, little, some ghetto ass kid that's exactly. trying to exactly everything about this tweet, man, is racist. Now that's what I'm trying to get you to say, and I know, of course, you're not going to say that, but everything about this spews and oozes racism up to and including why the hell would, even if it was true why the hell would you even tweet this out to begin with what would be the purpose of telling white people how many blacks are killing them nothing about this makes african americans look good you understand what i'm saying hey, nothing hey but is this all we got for racism against trump i mean we got some better stuff no, than there's, this. there's other stuff <laughs> but why do we have this why do we even have this because he because he failed to check something before he tweeted it because he was a super tweeter that didn't know when to shut the fuck up. And we both know okay. that. Even if you're correct about him failing to check the accuracy of it, I still have to ask the question, why was it sent out to begin with? What was the purpose of telling white people that blacks are killing you like this? What is the purpose of that? I think I think the highlighted parts, actually, the blacks killed by blacks. I don't know why he would even, I don't know why this was even sent out to begin with, but like I exactly. say, it's uh... <laughs> exactly this it, 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 in no uncertain terms. This is horrible. Everything about this is horrible, which is what Bill O'Reilly was telling them. Like you're literally serving yourself up on a platter to people who think you're racist because everything about this. And I, I would submit to you that if a white, a, a black guy did the same shit about white people, whites would say he's racist. This is racist, period. 
This is racist. The drawing, as you mentioned, the guy with the gun to the side looking like a thug, everything about this is racist. I mean, we can say, well, is this all you got or whatever, but this right here is racist. Now, if you want to donate some money to some HBCU so we'll forget about it, hey, talk to some black folks. But this right here is undeniably racist. Bill O'Reilly even told him, this shit is fucking racist as hell. Listen, I got to move out. I got to move it on Trump trade. You know, we, you know how as we do always. it. Bro. God yeah, bless. You're welcome back. Thank you for having me on the show. And Lady Patriot, I always love. So we'll see you. <laughs> Absolutely. Always a pleasure, man. Come back through anytime. All right. Looking in the box, I'm going to go straight back to the box here. I won't blow VA too long. We'll go straight to Julie5521. Believe this is a new caller. Go ahead and drop it out, Trump train, because my side over here is doing some crazy shit. Look, if he, he just accepted me on his live. You want to be on here? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay, there we go. All right, apparently somebody else did not want to be on there. That's fine. Uh, Anthony6195. And let me make something clear to you guys, folks. As you've seen, Trump Train is about as mag as they can be. Trump Train is a friend of the program. Me and him do not agree politically. That is fine. It doesn't mean a damn thing. I don't ban, block, or censor. I let that man state his point. I don't talk down to anyone, regardless of their political affiliation. So when you're in a box... Give you plenty of time to discuss your point. But I may push back. I may rebut because that's what we do here. Civil discourse. Anthony, 6195. Appreciate that defense. This is how I learned. The sentiment is mutual. Same over here. Uh, Anthony, 6195, good evening to you. What's going on, boss, man? You're a good host, man. You're a great host. You let people get their comments out. You don't stop nobody. Yo, sense of nobody in the box. I definitely appreciate that. I appreciate that. So what's on your mind this evening? Again, I'm coming in behind somebody that I just watched for 30 minutes doing cartwheels and magic tricks. Well, I had to get a man a chance. To speak. I had to get a man a chance to speak his point. Let me let in regards to what you said about cartwheels and magic tricks, which is funny as hell. I will say this. Oftentimes, the, the, the first question I always get is, what did Trump ever say that's racist? And I will tell you something. Everyone that I play this video to, the response is, well, is that all you got? Kind of like the guy say, I bet you won't hit me. Hit me again. Because... because <laughs> <laughs> You could have went, well, went, you know, went straight down. You could have went straight back to a tweet and hit him with the tweet that uh, from them people down there, what's the retirement home in Florida? Well, yeah. he retweeted up. So, you know, what the yeah, way there's, there's other, Yeah, there, there's certainly other stuff. But to me, I often use this example because yeah, this that doesn't was, leave that was this, Yeah, this one doesn't leave any wiggle room. There is no reason for yeah. this. It's wrong. It's no apology. There is no wiggle room to this at all. I could talk Central Park Five and some of that other stuff he was bringing up, but this right here, as um, what is the guy's name, Cat Williams? This shit right here. There's no out. <laughs> this shit right here. <laughs> yeah. There is no. There is no explanation for this other than to bring up other things. Well, you know, vote for me, or you ain't black, or HBCU. You can bring up other stuff. But you can't explain this away. There's no out to this. It is flat no. as can be. It, it, it is. I had never seen that either. But um, Candace Owens. Yeah. I have a big problem <laughs> with the fact that we have, and excuse me for 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 not being able to be politically correct. But we have white people telling us who's good for us. It's she doesn't have a black crowd. She doesn't have a black following. She she doesn't speak to us. But they tell us that she's great for us. Why? Because she's um she bends and folds. Well, we're talking about what? Wait, you, say, you say why? Because she do what? She bends and folds. Oh, she bends and folds. Okay, I get it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Candace Owens, as far as I'm concerned, I'd say at least 80 to 90% of what she says about African Americans is negative. 
And yeah, the, idea that you can, the idea that you can wake up black folks by just telling them every bad thing about them constantly, to me, it falls on deaf ears. I don't care if, how you're trying to help out somebody. If you're trying to help somebody lose weight or stop smoking or what, just simply talking negative about them all the time is not, you're not likely to have success doing that. I, I just don't see what she's doing as helping blacks out at all. Facts. And black people as a as a community, we have our issues, but so does everybody yeah. else. And I'm right. and I'm tired of I'm tired of hearing the misnomer that um all of our kids are fatherless. Let me let me point out a, st- a statistic to you that I always bring out, but a lot of people hate when I do. Okay. They they love to say that. We're single parent, um, our, our women's are single parent women and this, that, and the third. And they don't get married. Well, what's the divorce rate in America? About 75%? Yeah, it's pretty damn high, at least 70. Yeah. So the divorce rate in America is about 75%. And that you're ain't all black us, people. Yeah, but I mean, you're telling us that black people don't get married. You know, this is what you're telling us. Right. So if black people don't get married and the divorce rate is seventy five percent, who's getting divorced? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way of stating that. <laughs> it's so a great way of stating there's that. a there's a lot of there's a lot of white men that are not in their homes also. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would submit that what she gave like a two second coverage to is the mass incarceration rate of the seven of the eighties and nineties is why a lot of black men are not around. It's those ridiculous and that's, long and that's a true statement. Three strike laws and shit like that. And see, that's how she gets by. She sprinkles in truth on top of a whole lot of bullshit. And when you well, hear the I, truth, you know, when you hear, yeah, I, I definitely think she sprinkles in truth, but I think that I don't know. If, I won't say it's necessarily on top of a whole lot of bullshit. I will say it's by omission. You can make any group of people look horrible if all you do is deliberately point out only the negatives. Like I mentioned earlier, the, the HBCUs that Trump supposedly gave money to—they're pumping out very intelligent black people all the time. You won't hear yes. Candace Owens talking about those folks at all. There's a lot of positives in the black community she could discuss. She's deliberately not doing it. I live in Winston-Salem. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We have a a historic HBCU here in Winston-Salem. We have one of the best, the best nursing programs in the United States. Not not North Carolina, but the United States. So, Wow. Um... You don't hear this, you know. You, you don't hear her talk about the the majority of the nurses that come out of this school uh, go on to be no, great no. nurses, and, or, and we come, we come out a lot of them. So you know, yep. it, 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 it's it's the she's selling, she's selling. That's what people don't understand. And I think we were, I think I was having a conversation with you when I was telling you. Um, that MAGA is one of the biggest selling markets in America right now. You said, what is one of the biggest? Oh, MAGA. MAGA. Yeah, you were telling yes. me MAGA, apparel, of, shirts, and flags, and all of that. Yeah, I, yeah, oh, I It's, it's one of the biggest, and when I say selling, se- uh, selling markets, not just the shirts, not just the caps, but uh, conversations, podcasts, anything that you can do to get the money out of these suckers, if you want to get rich right now, that's the, that's the qu- quickest way to get rich. So I have to ask, if MAGA is selling like that, what are the chances that Trump will be back in 24? It won't happen. And I'm going to tell you why. This 2022 is going to break their heart. Now, we're not going to get everything we want. But 2022 is going to break their heart. And they hear, they're hearing nothing about it. They're in such an echo chamber that they don't know that they're really not winning this battle. So you don't see a red wave next month? Hell no. No. <laughs> I don't know if Man, I, do, I don't do, know do if you I, no, I, no, no, Hassan, be honest. They I are am, doing everything. Sure. They they're doing everything they can, but but look at the motherfucking can, look, oh excuse me. Look at the candidates. 
Look at I look at the it, level of candidates that they put now. I get it, but it's a referendum on Biden. Biden is a not not a favorable politician, even to a lot of liberals. Back. I get what Back. you're and saying. The candidates suck, but Biden in the economy and gas prices going up. That's going to that's going to be reflected in the midterm votes. I mean, I'm just telling no. you. I don't know no. if it's going to be a rare wave at the end of the day, but I don't know if I feel as confident as you. Now, let me ask you a question. Well, we're going to have these economic well, we're going to have these economic woes no matter who the president was. I can't say that. I, I'm just going to it's say global. this. Always, it's global. It's global. This is not just America. This is global. I can't. Yeah, I get, I, I get that from my guests all the time. But I always say this. Regardless if the team wins or loses, the coach is held responsible. The coach doesn't Facts. get to blame the quarterback. Facts. Doesn't get. Yeah. And Biden is in office. So all of that is now, globally me, and all that. Biden is in office. Ha- is happening under his watch. Because make no mistake about it. If gas dropped globally. Biden and Kamala Harris would be taking credit for that. They wouldn't be saying, well, the gas oh, is yes. going down everywhere. They would be taking no. credit for it. Now, let me, let, me, let me ask you. Now, let me ask you. Mitch McConnell, he's on his way out. He knows this is his last term. Okay. Mitch McConnell, the, 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 the normal Republicans, the normal conservatives, do you right. really think, do you really think they don't want their party back? They have to burn this fever out. This fever has to burn out. And, and, when I I say, and when I say that, when I say that, I say it because if he gets elected, if he gets reelected, if the majority, and I said only seven, seven out of 10 people that he selected in this uh, campaign this and, and, and next month, seven out of 10 people he chose going to lose. I really believe that. Yeah. It, and, and, and he chose a lot of people, and normal people are tired of this shit. Normal Republicans are tired of this shit. But is it enough? You know what I'm saying? Is it enough of to make that difference? The question is going to be: the question is going to be: is it going to be enough of us? Because they're coming out. They vote. They vote. Yeah. The question is: is it going to be enough of us? That's the question. Are we going to be inter? Are we interested in our survival, our kids' survival enough to understand that we have to come out? Because if he gets back in office, if those people get back in office, we got at least twelve states right now that has slavery back on the fucking battle. Oh my god! Let's not go there. Let's hope that. I mean, I'm just shit. being real. I don't know. I don't want to go too crazy, but oh, that's, but you, I do agree you, we need to come out and vote. But hey, listen, I got to move it on, though, Anthony. Go ahead. I, I, gotta I, I love on. talking to you. Nice hey, absolutely. Come on, come on back through any time, man. Yo. All right. Good talk. All right. Go on. Uh, Dim, what it says, Dim's leaving the party or not voting. Uh, Jerry, I will say this. In, in every election as of late, there's always a walk away movement. Blacks are going to walk away and vote Democrat. At the end of the day, it doesn't happen. There was a hashtag walk away floating all over the damn place in regards to the 2020 election. Blacks are going to walk away from the Democratic Party and vote for Trump. But when you look at what actually happened, it never materialized. Trump did get more votes than the pre- most presidents, most Republicans in recent history. But it was nowhere near enough to suggest there was some kind of walk away. And as a result, he didn't win. So I don't, I don't see that walk away. Not at least not in, not in the near future. And certainly because Trump has done some things like what I just played right there, and with folks like Candace Owens. That's and by the way, if you want to make America great, none of that has anything to do with making the country good or making the country great. Trump could have just gave the country the economy that you guys have all come to know and love and all of that without doing that shit. That stuff, all of that sideshow shit has really hurt his presidency. But I know a lot of my MAGA folks, my beloved MAGA folks, you guys like that stuff. You like the rhetoric. You like the attacks. You like the name calling. But you keep doing it, you're probably going to get to like Mar-a-Lago. Looking in the box, we got authentically become back to the program. God damn, my bears just lost. I am pissed. That sucks. Anyway, 
looking in the comments, uh, authentically. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing good. You know, I've been listening to what's been going on tonight with the show, and I have to say, I don't think that there's been proper uh, credence that MAGA has provided for me to say that Trump isn't racist. Um, I'd like to say that he's done a lot of things to try to make his character of himself look like he isn't racist. But at the end of the day, he didn't do enough to try to protect the children that were brought in from Mexico to try to stop them from being put in cages. He didn't do enough to try to keep people from being divided and in racial slander back and forth. And he well, with the, with the kids in well, with the kids in cages, you said he didn't do enough to protect them. That was not his goal. His goal was to treat them like crap as an incentive for them not to come, including treating the kids like crap. That was the goal. So he wasn't trying to protect them. He was trying to treat them badly. Exactly, but he was treating them badly because of where they were coming from. His whole campaign was based off of the concept of. We have to do something about the brown people that are coming from the South because they're coming in his inauguration speech. It was all dark and gloomy of the uh, the violence and tyranny that was coming from the South. So you're suggesting that he even was exhibiting racism in his immigration policies? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. What about... Immigrants coming in that were not brown. You think he was just simply treating them different? He said that he was fine if they were coming from the... Yes, as Moving uh, Mountain says there. I didn't want to say that and get you in trouble. Um, but basically, yeah. he had no problems if they were coming from Greenland or Norway or something like that. But everywhere else yeah, was... Yeah, a, I remember that. Yeah. An well, what, let me ask you this question in regards to the comments. Lady One Patriot in the comments is suggesting that... Dems are obsessed with Trump. How do you respond to someone when you talk about Trump that suggests that you're obsessed with them? I would say that the idea of an obsession would be far from the truth. If anything, you've got enough people that wanted him out of office this last term and enough people on both sides, as he likes to say, that were just <laughs> sick of the drama so sick of it. Yeah. Well, my response to something like that would be, uh, Lady One Patriot, in regards to folks being obsessed with Trump, Trump is incredibly active in politics right now. Half of the candidates in the midterms are there because of his endorsement. Why would you remain silent on somebody who is incredibly vocal in the elections? Trump is not, a, Trump is not being silent, but you want the Dems to not say anything about Trump? Yet he's holding rallies all over the country talking about the Dems. I will tell you this, for my MAGA folks, that would be incredibly beneficial if we would shut the hell up and just let him talk about us and not say nothing back about him. So I totally understand why you're saying it. I just submit to you it makes no sense. So racism in immigration. Anything else you've seen from Trump yourself authentically that would make you think that He's intolerant towards certain races. If we look back before his candidacy and we look back to the real estate world and we look at the times where his father was running things and he was learning from his father, their policies were all geared towards a division of the races, not having people of brown color in their properties. So when they so, were doing rental apartments and things like that, they were not renting to people that were brown. So how do you respond to folks saying, well, Trump was loved by black people before he became president? He did a lot as a celebrity to create an image that was so popular that it didn't matter, just like he would like to say, that he could do anything because networking and business networking is very important to people. So at the end of the day, he could say, Say and do what he wanted to in order to get what he wanted as he would say I could go on X street and go and do X behavior yeah. and nobody yeah. would do anything or stop me that's crazy yeah yeah of course he certainly said that uh, in the middle of Fifth Avenue statement okay and by the way I will say this folks um 
when you guys were suggesting that people were obsessed with Trump or can't stop talking about him, you'd have to also assume MAGA would be in that crowd, right? I mean, Trump is not president. How many MAGA still suggest he's the current president right now? How many folks are still flying Trump 2020 flags in front of their houses or 2024 flags, even though Trump hasn't announced he's running? So if you want to point out folks being obsessed with him, you'd have to assume MAGA's in that crowd as well, right? I mean... I'm not the only one with one of these hats, <laughs> okay? So, I mean, if you want to talk about being obsessed, is, is, it, is it impossible for the, the right to also be obsessed with the guy? <laughs> but I don't know. Um, authentically, I don't know where they're getting obsessed from. To me, referring to someone, referring to a liberal as being obsessed with Trump is essentially, is essentially saying, I'd rather you stop talking about the guy because... You're hurting the image of somebody we hope to run again. That's exactly what it is, because at the end of the day, they still want to see him on the news channels. They still want to see a place where they can put Trump 2024 conversation. So at the end of the day, if they really wanted it all to go away and move on to other political candidates, then they wouldn't talk about him either. Absolutely. And that's yeah, that's that's my sentiments exactly is that Trump rallies are still selling out and filling up every damn where. So it's not the li- those aren't liberals at those rallies that are in line for hours to go to those rallies. So there's some there's certainly some obsession in Trump that has nothing to do with liberals. They just don't want to call it a obsession unless it's coming from the liberal side of the aisle. So and uh, Lady Patriot said that's because most people love. Them. Well, you don't. Have, you can love or hate somebody and be obsessed with them. I mean, so you're okay with obsession as long as they love them, but you don't want to hate obsessed. Then you're just biased in favor of Trump. That's all that's saying. But and anyway, the only thing I can say ahead. to that: Trump that himself again? would not care either way if people love or hate him, as long as his name is in their mouth. True. I, all publicity is good publicity. I, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Uh, this says, Mr. Handsome, play that video you played last week. He is not a racist. Uh, make, um, Lady Pitcher, what video are you talking about? Uh, give me the video you referencing. But yeah, I, I agree that there are certainly as, suspicious aspects of Trump's past that give people a legitimate reason to criticize. Now, you can say, well, this isn't racist or that isn't racist. That's fine. But the idea that nobody should even be bringing it up. I mean, he settled actual uh, discrimination lawsuits. If you can see racism in vote for me and you ain't black, but you see no racism in the man actually losing a discrimination lawsuit, then you're just being biased. I mean, because yes. <laughs> losing an actual lawsuit where you're clearly writing the letter C on colored people with applications, to me, is a lot more clear than vote for me, you ain't black. And that's just my opinion on that. Well, I do have myself a good night. and I want to say thank you for having me on tonight. And definitely great conversation. Authentically becoming. Always welcome back. Good talk. Uh, looking at the comments, Zach Florida 2 is racist. Great question. Uh, just from your humble correspondent, in my opinion, any white guy coming from the Trump Biden era, yeah, there's some racism in him. Just like I'm 50 years old, being candid about my age, I'm 50 years old, a child of the 70s and 80s. Any guy that is in my age category has some homophobia in them. That's just what we did in those days. Same thing applies to Biden and Trump. There's no way most guys in their era, in their position of power being among the elite members of white society, do not harbor some racism. They came up in a time when we were being used as servants and all of that shit. That's how they were brought up when we were kids. When they were kids, rather. They, They seen black people as lesser. So hopefully they fought to get away from that mindset the same way yours truly may have fought to get away from the homophobia mindset that it was brought up in me. But that's not to say it didn't happen. I'm not going to lie and pretend like we didn't make jokes about the LGBT community and shit like that when we were kids in locker rooms and stuff, throwing around the F-A-G word. We did that. 
You gonna tell me Biden and Trump didn't throw around the N-word? Do you really believe that? No, of course not. If you're being honest with yourself. Because it was what they did during that time. Period. But like I stated, Trump lost a lawsuit. And I will give you this in response to your question, is Biden racist or whatever the case may be? One thing I'll give Biden credit for, which Trump trained fuck Biden earlier in the program pointed out in regards to that video I just played showing that Trump did some really racist shit, is that Trump should have apologized. Biden, for all of his comments, has apologized profusely. Now, I understand there's folks who don't forgive him, don't accept his apology, but if you fuck up, Apologies are all you can do. You can't force people to accept them, but you can at least try. When it comes to Trump, there's no apologies. None. He does and says crazy shit, and there's no apologies for it, which is why I asked uh, Trump Train when I was talking to him, how are African Americans supposed to view that when you say something that is that controversial and you offer no apology for it? That's a big deal, at least from yours truly, that you just left that out there. You've been called out. You've been shown that what you said is inaccurate, and you're going to leave that out there like that. It's like if I was to sit next to you, stand up and step on your feet, and you jump up and yell, damn, dude, you stepped on my feet. And I look you in the eye and walk away. I don't apologize. I don't say I'm sorry or anything. What are you left to believe other than I intended to do that? That's how we view Trump when he refuses to apologize. Like you must have intended to do that because you didn't, you didn't say nothing. I mean, I don't care about being a businessman, being a non-politician or whatever. No one should be above admitting when they're wrong and making excuses for lack of apologies and all of that. To me, that just makes you look biased in favor of Trump. In regards to Joe Biden, vote for me or you ain't black, some of his big, biggest critics were the people who supported him, were the black community, were people like Charlemagne the God who was interviewing him when he said that. When Trump says something crazy, MAGA does not criticize him for it. They actually jump in and try to make reasons why he said it was okay or why he made a mistake or something like that. You're not getting that from Biden supporters. So to me... That makes, makes it a little bit easier. Difference. You declare war, you but go through NATO where is countries, this video? contribute. But that country, they stay there. For you guys who didn't hear this. Okay. Are you it's aware, a much better idea, and certainly better for us. Are you aware that the liberal media and the Democratic Party in general are trying to paint you as a racist? Are you aware of that? I think so, but I think people know better than okay, that. I'm right. probably the least racist person on earth. Well, I've known you I think a long time, know better and I, don't, than that. I never saw any racism from you. However, when you tweet out a thing, and this bothered me, i got to tell you. You tweeted out that um, whites killed by blacks, these were statistics you picked up from somewhere, at a rate of 81%. And that's totally wrong. Um, whites killed by blacks is 15%. Yet you tweeted it was 81 percent. Now, Bill, I didn't tweet. I retweeted somebody that was supposedly yeah, an expert. Yeah, but you don't want to be. And it was also a radio show. Why do you want to be in that well, zone? Hey, Bill, Bill, am I going to check every statistic? I get millions and millions of people. You got it. Trump, presidential contender. You got to check. I have millions of people. You know what? Fine. But this came out of radio shows and everything else. Oh, come on. All radio it was shows? Was a retweet. I didn't say, excuse me. All it was is a retweet. It wasn't from me, and it did. It come out, came out of a radio show uh, and other be places because you see all the names. Look, you know I'm looking out for you, right? You know that? You know I'm looking out for you. I look out for every honest politician. I don't care what party they're in. Don't do this. Don't put your name on stuff like this because it makes the other side, it gives them stuff to tell the ill-informed voter that you're a racist. I mean, just get his hand well, in the platter. This was a retweet. But I'm sure you're looking out for me. All Everybody right. is, right? Yeah. Uh, this was a retweet. This yeah. was a retweet. All right, whatever it is. And it came I told from you, you sources shouldn't tweet that ever. very credible. You shouldn't be tweeting. You? Don't tweet. Give it All up right. for Lent. Sure. Lent is coming soon. Now, here's the thing about the retweet stuff, which I really have a problem with. You're going to tell me if Barack Obama was retweeting white blue-eyed devil stuff from Farrakhan, he could just dismiss it as it's a retweet? Because it didn't come from me. If that's the case, any president could be racist as hell 
as long as they make sure someone else said the racism. He's essentially saying, I don't, I'm not responsible for anything I tweet out of my own account if, I, if it's not my words. What kind of shit is that? And people are defending that. Like, yeah, he's right. He didn't say it. If you want to point out that Trump is a businessman, a successful businessman, and he, and he absolutely was. He owned all sorts of properties all over the world. You're talking about a guy then who would have obviously signed numerous of big million-dollar contracts for skyscrapers, properties, golf courses, you name it, all over the world. He knows the value of putting his name on something because that's how he's made all of his money throughout life as a businessman, as my MAGA folks point out. But you're going to tell me when it comes to Twitter, he suddenly becomes as ignorant as a kindergartner and has no clue that putting his name. He's tweeting this shit out from the presidential account, period. Not only is it crazy to do it, but then he comes back with a response like, I don't have time to fact check everything I send out. As if he isn't the guy who is known for the phrase fake news. Admitting that I don't even check the shit that I send out. But yet I'm criticizing CNN every week. You don't have to love or hate MAGA to see a problem with this. Yes, the name is the handsome liberal. Fine. Take away the name. Even if a MAGA individual, a MAGA supporter said what I'm saying, does this really sound stupid to criticize the guy who's known for fake news for stating that he tweeted out shit, very controversial shit that he didn't fact check? Is it that bad to hold a guy accountable for something that is an obvious fuck up? This is what I say all the time on the program. Be willing to call a spade a spade no matter who the hell's dealing the cards. Be willing to call a strike a strike no matter who's up to bat. Don't turn a blind out of shit like this.